fourteen on it's uh, six fourteen on December seventh, um, twenty twenty one. I call this meeting of the Well Fleet Select Board to order in accordance with the temporary suspension and enhancement of the open meeting law, as allowed by the General Court of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, the um, before we get to our fir fir first order of business, um, I would just like a moment of silence for um, all the servicemen um, who served in, in World War II. Okay. Um, so first order of business is um, open session and public comments. Public comments must be brief and the board will not deliberate or vote on any matter raised solely during announcements and public comments. Um, are there any? John? Uh, yeah, I don't, don't, this is probably not the right time to bring it up. I just, is, is there a time at the end of the meeting when I can uh, uh, bring up a possible agenda item? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. I'll wait till then. Okay. All right. Um, seeing no others, um, I'd like to go on to appointments. Um, so Charlie, um, for uh, Mary McIsaac. I'm sorry, Ryan. I I I left the meeting. And I just got back in. What are you? What are we dealing with now? Um, appointments of the interim town treasurer. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, 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 um, I did something in error. Um, oh, thank you so much. Um, so as you all are know, um, uh, Miriam Spencer, our town treasurer, resigned last week, and um, I'd like to recommend the appointment of uh, Mary McIsaac as our interim town treasurer. Um, and I will tell you that we have advertised for the treasurer position. Uh, the resumes are due at the end of next week. Um, so clearly, um, this was this. We hope this is more interim than most of our interim positions. Okay. Um, are there any questions from the board or the public? Okay. So um, I move to appoint uh, Mary McIsaac. Um, as the interim town treasurer. Second. Oh, uh, wait a minute, uh, Ryan. Yep. Isn't, isn't this the town administrator's appointment or is it ours? Um, I think it's all. Uh, it, 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 I'm sorry, it is the town administrator's, but you have the two week, yeah. you know, maybe rescission uh, uh, option. I suggest that we take no action, uh, Ryan. Mm -hmm. So I, I move to accept uh, the appointment of uh, the interim town treasurer, Mary McIsaac. Um, uh, except or maybe maybe to support it. Yep. Yeah. She she won't go for support. I've tried that before. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm. How about I move to accept uh, the town administrator's appointment of Mary McIsaac? Okay. Second. Uh, roll call vote. John, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Okay, motion carries three zero. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, so on to the um, Wealthy Elementary School playground. Um, I know that Mary Beth Rodman and Martha Gordon are, are both on. Um, so, and other members of the school committee, I should say as well. So. Uh, Mary Beth, um, why don't you walk us through it? Thank you, Mr. Curley. Thank you all for allowing me to come tonight. I did prepare a little bit of a presentation. If I could share that with you, it may take about three minutes. Hang on, let me just let you screen share. Hold on one second. Okay, you're all set. Thank you. On behalf of the Wellfleet Elementary Playground Committee, thank you for welcoming me this evening. I will present my history of developing the Wellfleet Elementary School's capital improvement planning budget, including the playground. The history of the capital improvement planning for West. 
In FY15, the Nasset Public Schools recruited Habib and Associate Architects to inspect and prepare a capital assessment, excuse me, asset assessment of the Nasset school buildings in order to develop a budget for current and future repairs and upgrades for each site. Every uh, building's envelope, building interiors, mechanical systems, and electrical systems, thus extending the school's useful life. The assessment, which included on-site field visits, review of construction documents where available, and discussions with the school's head custodian and the NASID Assistant Director of Finance, provided an overall evaluation of the physical condition of the building and site. Work items listed were a guide to develop, repair, and renovate projects with preliminary cost estimates. The Habib assessment identified projects with the recommended priority from one being most critical to four, which does not meet current codes for new construction, but is existing grandfathered and may require corrective work if a substantial renovation or a substantial building addition is performed. The playground replacement was deemed priority three, meaning it was recommended for plate replacement in year six through 10. So that would have been between 2021 and 2025. The estimated cost to replace playground equipment only in 2021 was $250,000. This estimate did not include the cost for safety surfacing or installation. Each year, the building principal West Head Custodian, Superintendent of Schools, and the Director or Assistant Director of Finances meet to build a 10-year SIP projection. The school committee approves the presented SIP annually and the SIP items are then submitted by priority to the town administrator, typically in October. And here is where I wanna share with you some specific playground information. Originally, the West Playground was included as an FY21 SIP item. The goal was and continues to be to construct an outdoor play environment that is safe, inclusive, and accessible for all children ages 5 through 12, five through 12 and one that encourages play, creativity, exploration, and well being. The playground will be utilized by Wellfleet Elementary School students during school hours and will be available to the community after school hours. West eagerly got to work in the winter of 2020 to post a playground forum and seek input from students, staff, parents, and community stakeholders via a, a survey campaign. On March 5, 2020, a playground forum was held at West to kick off the playground project and recruit participants to join a playground subcommittee. The forum was advertised in the school news newsletter through Parent Square, which is the school to home communication platform, and in the local newspapers. Surveys were created and provided to students, staff, family, and the community. Forum flyers and surveys were placed in various locations around town including the public library, the COA, town hall, the Montessori preschool, and the marketplace. The first official subcommittee meeting was scheduled for April 14th, but we were in lockdown by then, and unexpectedly, the SIP priorities changed due to the fire suppression system installation requirement and the need to replace the building's deteriorating envelope, meaning the exterior cedar shingle cladding and trim. The previous wooden play structure neared 30 years of age when it was deemed unsafe in summer 2020 by the Wellfleet Fire Department and ultimately demolished. As a result of a myriad of unforeseen factors, the lockdown, the building asset needs reprioritization, COVID-19 protocols requiring distancing, outdoor instruction and outdoor mealtimes, the town's financial matter, and the fire suppression system inadvertently not being added to the 2021 warrant, the new playground SIP request was moved from FY21 to FY24 and moved again, landing in FY25. In summer 2021, the West Playground Subcommittee mobilized and recruited additional staff, parents, and community members, forming a 16-member West Playground Committee 
to seek funding sources for a playground installation as soon as possible and certainly well before FY25. The West Playground Committee reviewed the original survey outcomes and identified the preferred components, established playground outreach subcommittees to commence letters of community support and donation writing, and developed the committee's mission to design and install a playground structure that is representative of the community, Cape Cod and the general locale, environmentally friendly, meets ADA accessibility, inclusivity, equipment, installation, and surfacing compliance, engages all students ages five through 12, encouraging play, creativity, exploration, and well-being. One that is uniquely inviting, patron-friendly, and a point of pride for the community, a place considered by many to be a destination. A quality product, creatively designed, and that will serve our children well for many years to come. One of the funding sources that we opted for uh, that is available to us in Massachusetts is community preservation funds. CPC member Ron Fowler heard of Wes's endeavor, um, endeavor this summer and contacted Lisa Holmes, a West Playground Committee member, encouraging our committee to submit an application for community preservation funding for the fall 2021 town meeting. An initial application was submitted in August 2021, and a more comprehensive application was formally submitted on November 5th, 2021. A playground at West will provide, expand, and preserve services for the wealthy community. The purpose of the Community Preservation Act is to help communities preserve open space and historical sites, create affordable housing, and develop outdoor recreational facilities. CPC has funded like projects for the Recreation Department, such as the skate park, pickleball courts, and tennis courts. Those projects were granted approximately $4,000 from the CPC. West has recruited O'Brien and Sons Incorporated as the vendor for the playground project. O'Brien and Sons is an approved and vetted vendor on the Massachusetts Higher Education Consortium, of which Nasset is a member. It is worthy to note that the Massachusetts Higher Education Consortium does not require requests for proposals since the consortium has been vetted and is an approved vendor. Like Compi's, MHEC provides members the ability to buy equipment. Pardon me? I'm sorry, I just coughed. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Like Combi's, MHEC provides members the ability to buy equipment direct at a 5% to 6% discount. Utilizing this nonprofit purchasing consortium uh, was approved by the Wealthy Procurement Office. The quote for the project is now $385,000. The quote includes all costs for site work, safety zone ground products, the structure for equipment, installation and inspection for certification. The plan is to complete uh, the project in its entirety by the summer of 2022. Once the work is underway, the playground can be constructed in just two weeks. The Wellfleet Elementary School Parent Teacher Association, the PTA, typically gives less $10,000 each academic year to offset the cost of field trips and assembly presentations. For this project, we requested the 2020 to 2021 gift be utilized to fund upwards of that $10,000 towards the playground project. The West PTA has created a separate budget line item to receive financial playground contributions. This academic year, the PTA will dedicate revenue earned via their fundraising efforts to the playground project. The PTA anticipates it will successfully raise an additional 5,000 to 7,000 to put toward the project. To date, the PTA in partnership with the West Playground Committee has received close to $20,000 in donations from businesses in in-kind giving. Wellfleet Elementary School has become a hub for the town and is utilized purposefully year round. 
Wes is utilized, for example, for town meetings, basketball, pickleball, open gym, Saturday toddler gym, flu and COVID-19 vaccine clinics, COVID-19 testing sites, community spaghetti suppers, and parent workshops. To serve the social and pre-academic needs of our youngest community members, Wes provides a classroom space to the Wellfleet Montessori Preschool Program and has welcomed the Recreation Department's office from Town Hall to Wellfleet Elementary School. As a result, Wes and the Recreation Department work closely in planning programs for children and adults. The goal of this partnership is to expand the school's use as an after-hours community center, offering interesting, varied, and exciting courses and workshops to engage our community in lifelong learning. Well, Fleet is currently seeking ways to attract and retain young families, including the development of affordable housing across the West. Recreational spaces, such as the school's playground, will be enticing for recruiting young families to town. Thank you. Okay, and you said that you had a presentation? Well, what I share, what I would like to share now are the renderings. Yes, let's do that first before we go to questions, so. So there are different angles of the renderings from O'Brien and Sons. So this is one, and what we did is I have on the playground committee an occupational therapist who is part of our school. So I wanted to make sure that there were appropriate pieces of equipment for our special education population. And what you'll see is that we have an expansive piece of um, property out back for this playground, and they're able to spread the equipment out in such a way that it is very appropriate and accessible for special ed students being able to traverse from one piece of equipment to the other. So each of these um, pieces or these renderings just show a different angle of, let me see if I can share the next one, of the playground. Not sure why I'm not getting all of them here. Let's see. It's a different, a different angle. And to the right of this particular uh, picture would be where the swing sets are. I'm gonna X that one out. I'm not sure why the others are not popping up for me. Okay. I'm not sure if you can see that one, Mr. Curley. Yep. Can you see that one? Yes. Okay. So you can see where the swings are over here. This here is called a, a zip cruise. And then this is the play structure. These are, this is a spinning piece of equipment for uh, students who need that proprioceptive um, input to know where their body is in space. And as I said, this would be poured in place rubber so that children would be able to traverse easily. Wait, where is the rubber, the beige stuff? Yes. So tomorrow uh, I am presenting to the CPC at their nine o'clock meeting. And that presentation is similar. And they had received the quote, the renderings. Um, we also had the application of course and our surveys, our survey data, an article that was in the uh, Provincetown Independent an editorial that a parent had written in support of the playground. There's a copy of our original playground forum uh, invitation to folks. So they got a very comprehensive packet. Um, so I, 
my my main interest is is to get playground and install this as soon as possible. I believe that's what everybody's interest is right now. So, and what's really amazing when I met with Joe DeFore is the representative, and he is going to present with me tomorrow at CPC. And I was really shocked that once the equipment is in, he would be the project manager. It would only take two weeks for install. So I mean, potentially this could be in before school even lets out. Um, so I'm going to go to Helen. Um, Helen? Hi. Um, Hi. For this, and um, I'm a little embarrassed to be about to say what I'm going to say because so many people have worked so long on it. But um, Ryan, I believe uh, you went to Wellfleet Elementary School? Yes. I did too, and Mike Cadastro did too, but he's not there. Um, I am. I guess I better start with a question through you, Ryan, to Mary Beth. You spoke about surfacing compliance. Does that mean that anything under and around the kind of equipment you have here has to be soft and doesn't hurt people if they fall on it? Is that what that is? Correct. Oh, sorry. Yes? OK. So yes. I have a couple of points about this. That rubber horrifies me. First of all, it doesn't give as well as sand. I know what's under that rubber, which is frankly less green, the rubber than sand. It's sand. It's good, clean Cape Cod sand, and it's deep, and it gives. Even if you jump off a swing that's as high as it can go and land on it. Second thing, that rubber is slipperier in wet weather. Sand just absorbs you know, the water. Sand doesn't have to be replaced. And I am kind of shocked that you would want kids playing on that kind of surface at all. I'm not sure where this is coming from, but having used that playground for five solid years, hard with very little equipment to play in, by the way, we mainly did games, which was a very big social benefit for kids. Um, the pavement, some pavement is good because you can do hopscotch and a few other things. But that rubber is, I think, not only expensive, not only has to be replaced, but it's more dangerous than sand. And I really hope that even at this late stage, and forgive me for not participating earlier, that you would consider what I just said. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any other questions from the board or comments? Um, did we lose John? No, I'm right here. Okay. Um, so I, I moved to support the um, Wealthy Elementary School um, request to the Community Preservation Committee um, for funding for the playground reconstruction. Helen, second. Okay, um, Mary Beth. Uh, may I just um, just share why we had, as a collective playground committee, selected the cord in place? Sure. It was at the recommendation um, from the playground um, vendor. The sand would not meet code and would make us liable. I know, I, I completely agree, Helen. Sand and wood chips will not meet code. But currently the wood chips are grandfathered in. Um, I forget Joe would be able to answer how many feet worth of wood chips we would need and that would be consistent. And because they break down, you would never be at the level, the height that it has to be for what's called a fall zone. And the mass regulations are changing so that once they change, it's going to change to the port in place, which is encapsulated. It's supposed to not have, need any repairs for 12 to 15 years. So it's the direction that the state is going in. They had anticipated that that would have passed back in 2019, 2020. I don't know if COVID had um, impacted that. 
but until somebody files a complaint, if they have now the regs have changed, once somebody files a complaint, even what we're grandfathered in with being the wood chips, we would be held liable. So I agree, I would much rather a natural product, sand especially, they're just not going to, we might not be able to get certification for it, which is the unfortunate part. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm okay. qualified. Thank I know, you. I know. I would much rather sand or wood chips as well. If I may, Ryan, wood chips, I would not feel safe playing on. They and that's what we currently have. And they have splinters. Yeah. Okay. And we have to replace those every year, upwards of $4,000 out of our operating budget. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So there was a motion, it hasn't been seconded. I did, I seconded. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. So are we ready to vote? I believe yes. so. Uh, roll call vote, please. John, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Yeah. All right. Um, hopefully this, um, yeah, um, hopefully people in the community uh, get excited about having a playground again at the, the elementary school. All right. Um, so next so next order of business is Lieutenant Island Road chain or bridge uh, change order. Um, that is actually going to be tabled tonight. Um, there is um, the contractor is still working on um, or the engineer is still working on the materials for it. Um, so that brings us to the capital improvement plan. Um, so, uh, Charlie, can you uh, go through your your um, executive summary? Uh, yes, thank you, Ryan. Um, so uh, we, as you know, we met with all of the various department heads um, and um, in, in early October, late September, and uh, we worked to put this uh, capital plan together uh, for the finance committee and the select board. Now, <clears throat> when I will just maybe upfront um, make um, a, a couple of notes. Now, within the capital plan for the elementary school, um, I had included um, their um, detailed plan. Um, from uh, October 10th, and they had given me um, an update um, that I inadvertently didn't insert in the booklet. And I think we, uh, so we'll get you a copy of that. But, but the, um, I think the important thing is the spreadsheet in the summary page um, that I had been using does include the higher numbers for the sidewall shingling in the fire suppression system. So um, the detail that you have is, is flawed because of a mistake that I made, uh, but the overall plan includes um, the information that they, that they um, wanted to present to the town. And also on the fire suppression system, which is really the biggest project that we have facing us, we did have a meeting, I believe last week, with um, school officials in, in their um, professional staff. And it looks like that that number will probably increase from $2 million to $2.2 million. Uh, anyway, um, so currently uh, in the uh, a summary that I put together, when we looked at the total cost for fiscal year 2023, we had 37 individual projects that were included uh, in the capital plan for FY23. And the total amount for FY23 was $4,281,900. Um, and the total five-year plan um, stands at $10,631,277. Uh, but anyway, when you really look at um, fiscal year 2023, there are four really significant projects um, that are the focus uh, of the upcoming year. And those are the fire department, one of those is the fire department ambulance replacement project. 
that's $355,000 and most likely will be funded through ambulance receipts uh, revenues. And of course, then we have another uh, capital item for the fire department engine replacement, $675,000. The DPW loader replacement, $200,000. And the elementary school fire suppression system at what shows here is $2 million, but I think will most likely be $2.2 million. So really, you know, that the total there is is over $3 million. So the lion's share of the capital items um, that we're talking about um, are, are focused on, on those important projects. Now, <clears throat> when you look at the detail um, of the other many items, you know, I mentioned there was 37 total items for FY23. Uh, we need to come up with a financing plan. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit later in my report, but we had always hoped that we would finish closing out the books for um, FY20 and FY21 by the end of December. That's going to be extended a few weeks. But um, once we get that done, we will have some free cash that we can look forward to for certification. And the town hasn't certified free cash for a couple of years. So, you know, I, you know, while one of my priority recommendations to the select board and the finance committee will be to rep replenish um, the monies that we had taken out of stabilization fund, there should be some, some money there that we can use for some of these capital items. Um, anyway, that's, that process is in terms of the free cash certification and some of the recommendations is gonna be delayed a little longer than I, I would have liked because of um, you know, recent events, um, particularly focused on the resignation of the uh, town treasurer. And we had to reassign, as we talked about earlier, Mary McIsaac to do a lot of those day-to-day -day functions. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get there and um, and see if we can look at funding some of these important projects with some available funds. The other thing that um, we're also going to be looking at uh, once I get the budget finished up um, is we want to take a look at some of the old appropriations. There might be some old appropriations uh, that were made that you know um, maybe haven't been spent yet, and uh, maybe we might want to consider reallocating some of those monies. But it's another element um, that we need to spend um, a little bit of quality time on. And right now, Mary and Lisa are engaged in other more important items. Um, the only other thing I should have mentioned as well is there is an addition that is not included in the booklet in the um, overall document that you received. Um, and, and that is the library um, did um, submit a um, a capital improvement request, and it included three items for FY23, 24, and 25. The, the significant item for FY23 was $35,000 for, um, for library, uh, public computer area information commons, some upgrades to the equipment and um, software for that. So I don't think we've given that to you yet, but uh, we'll, we'll get that to you. I think that's all I have for the moment. Brian. Okay. Um, and then there's um, in the spreadsheets that you provide, there's a, a request. This is um, MISC or MIS um, request for 50,000 a year. Um, and there's no detail as to what that request is for. Yeah. I, what I, I was, you know, obviously. Um, so busy, I didn't have a chance to work with Dan from IT on that, but um, I just, so I just replicated the funding that's existed in that line item for a while, but oh, I will work with Dan to get some more detail. And I think, you know, more importantly, what does he want to use that $50,000 for, particularly in FY23. So I'll, um, I'll spend some time on that okay. when I have a chance. John? 
Yeah, what does MIS mean? I sent an email about that. I, it was oh yeah, I did I did reply, but it's management information systems. It's computer oh. hardware and software um, okay. upgrades for town equipment throughout the community. Um, Helen, who's Dan? Dan O'Keefe is the IT ah. coordinator from Barnstable County that you have under contract. Right, I forgot his name. So, yeah, sorry. I, I'm getting very casual. I've been here for all of six months now. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I, I just have one general comment. Um, there's a number of um, line items that seem to be at the same level every year. Yeah. Um, at that point, to me, that becomes part of the operations budget and not uh, capital anymore. Um, and then the, the other thing is if there is software included, um, you know, that whole sector is transitioning to um, software as a service um, rather than a single license. Um, so basically you pay for your license every year yeah. um, and renew it. And when you do that, that, that is obviously no longer a capital, um, a capital item. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's just a quick observation. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that's, thanks, Ryan. You're, you're right. Um, and I think, um, some of, uh, you know, there is a lack of detail in the outlying years, you know, it's going to um, require a little more detailed work by somebody going forward. So um, I'd say this is like a good start and uh, but it's a work in progress. Okay, Helen. Yeah, um, Ryan, you just said something very interesting to me. Um, I'd like to uh, ask Charlie what's normal and, you know, I, I think you what you said sound sounds right but just because it needs to be have money spent on it if it's a thing if it you know i'm thinking about me doing my own deductions sorting them out for my own profession um charlie what about what ryan just said if it's a thing shouldn't it be in the capital not the operations. Yeah. You know, if it's a physical thing that needs to be replaced. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. Um, I think every town has little practices. Uh, like I'll tell you in, in, in Brewster, you know, police cruises really only last like a year and a half. And we really, you know, they put so many operational hours and miles on them so quickly. So we really looked at those as operational costs, you know, in the end of the day. Well, what does and, the state say? Hmm? What does the state say? I, I, I don't know, Helen. I, I um, you know, I'm a little stale and dated on some of this stuff. I, I will say that the uh, Cape Managers, it has a meeting on Thursday that I'm going to try to attend. And maybe I'll ask some of the other communities what they do on some of these fronts. But it is true. I mean, there are software and sort of annual costs buried into this capital plan. It's just been your practice. And it might be a good time to um, really discuss those in a little bit more detail. Some of these things, you know, when I was talking to um, Fred McGee, the chair of the finance committee, and like he said to me, some of the items, if you look at their report, some of the items in here are the engineering and the feasibility study phases of a capital project and they really shouldn't be in the capital plan they should you know those should be raised um, within a warrant article so i think um i think it's evolving and it needs a lot more work um but i will reach out to some of the other communities when we meet on thursday to see how they handle some of these items i would very much like to know what the state's opinion about it is because I bet they have one and I'm just trying to be attentive here. I'm not saying you're mm. not right. I'm just saying I would go to the state also and just say, what do we do about this? What would you like us to do? Yeah, thank you. I, I, I will ask that because the, the, as you know, the D Department of Revenue 
has been really very helpful. And I just want to say that publicly, we're very grateful for all the support. I will, when I get a chance to talk to them again on some other matters, ask them if they have some guidance in that area too. So that's that's another good um, you know, way to evaluate what we do. Yeah, I, I believe the standard is if it's a capital item, it has to provide value for five years. If it's yeah. fully depreciated before that, then it's no longer a capital item, Yeah, usually. Um, John? Yeah, I, uh, is this the appropriate forum or the appropriate time to uh, raise specific line item questions or is is this like you um, say, we're, we're going to go through the the plan in a minute so this is just the executive summary and the okay 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 yep all right um yeah all right so um the first one is for the shellfish department um, um i see um, the Wellfleet Shellfish Department on. Um, is yeah. it Jordan or Johnny? It's Chris. Chris, okay. I'm not sure. So. Hey, Chris. Hey, what's up? Good evening, everyone. You want a little video? This is sure. <laughs> Ta da. There. A little cat, too. Oh, pussy cat. Yeah. How can I help this evening? Okay. Um, so the um, finance committee had a number of recommendations as well. Um, there are a couple that I'm concerned about. Um, so the, the shellfish and beach um, office. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, that place almost needs a, a renovation um, rather than, you know, ma simple maintenance or um, I, I would rather see, you know, uh, you know, renovation of that and potentially adding a, a second floor to provide additional space for the two departments. Um, that would make sense to me. I, I know it's not an area that you can use to work on gear, though. No. Uh... Yeah, I wanted to basically stop the uh, leak for possible mold and uh, more water damage. That's what I was told, you know, experienced that with the other building where we were infested with mold and it eventually destroyed our furnace. So, yeah. but yeah, no one ever mentioned to me the uh, possibility of a whole nother renovation building. Okay, Helen? Yeah, so we're talking about the building, which also houses the, you know, the beach permit stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're referring to? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I've always felt that the second floor of that building was wasted space and it should be all brought up to usefulness and that the shellfish department needs more space. And um, that's what I think. So whether you call it a renovation or repair, it needs to be made more humanly usable and you need a little Helen? Looks like she froze. She is frozen. Yep. Oh, now she's moving. Okay, uh, which part of my rant was I cut off at? I uh, need uh, the place to be humanly acceptable for the our departments. Yes, and <laughs> need more room because I've spent time downstairs and you're all doing very well, but you need more room and you particularly need a building where archives and whatever stuff is still on paper has to be safe. Mm -hmm. And I would say that the second floor would give you that. When I first asked about the second floor, I was told, oh, that's where the marina, you know, where the harbor master, where there's equipment, marina equipment and so forth that is on that second floor. But surely, um, surely, the shellfish department should have an equal opportunity. My next question is, what's its status right now, Chris? In other words, are you paying rent still to the Marina Enterprise Fund? What's going on with it? Did I, we'll some change? 
I'm not sure exactly the process. I think Will knows that, but uh, or or Nancy herself. But I believe that maybe we play some utilities. I'm not exactly sure what we do there, but okay. that, that that answer. Uh, Will has his hand up. Okay, thank you. I, I might be able to help out with that a little. Um, so the the shellfish department uh, currently pays the marina five thousand a year. And the beach department pays the marina 10000 a year for the use of the building. Um, in return, the marina pays all of the utilities, uh, propane uh, for the heat, um, uh, the water for the toilets and septic and all that. Um, we also do the septic pumping in that building. So pretty much what that equals, our cost a year to run any electricity, sorry. What that equals is basically what the two departments have been paying. Uh -huh. And when the last uh, round of administrations was and accounting was coming through this, they were trying to figure out a, a, a good way to break this up and not have the town paying the town <laughs> to be landlord to the town. Um, Cause it, 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 just even explaining that is your life. So yeah, that that's, that's where that currently sits right now. And so we, we would like kind of the, if, if shellfish in the, in the beach department and, and they see their plans being cohesive, um, we, we really don't have anything stored in the building. The building's not really, it used to be rented privately, obviously, for I don't know what the sums were back back in, in the days. And it would really be more beneficial if if that was their town department buildings instead of this, you know, quasi agreements of, you know, tenantship and, and landlordship. It would be more beneficial to the town to, to take it over and, and have it as their own department. I mean, they use it, they function well there and, you know, have at it. Um, so I would say a follow-up question not related to the rent um, is um, how much would it cost just to repair the leak for the time being and then look at a, um, you know, a renovation of the structure and, and I think a proposal given was 42 grand yep. for repair. I believe. Yes, it is. Um, is that is that just to fix the leak or is that um are there additional components involved in that as well i believe that was just mainly for repairs and making sure everything was correct so yeah. all right um so i i move to approve the shellfish department's request for uh repairs to the shellfish and beach office building i'll second okay. Okay, roll call vote. John I. Brian I. Helen I. Okay. Um, so replacement of shellfish truck. Uh, we put this off. I believe we put it off last year, didn't we? I couldn't answer that, but it's coming up this year. And yes, I would. I believe so. Okay. Are there any comments on the shellfish truck? Uh, yeah, they want to do that this year, right? Yep. Yeah. So they replace the black truck. The other trucks get replaced. So we try to have this rotation. It was uh, back when Walton was here, Mark Vincent recommended two years replacement for trade-in. And currently, Mark Vincent with Nancy, they requested like five years would be good just to keep it legit. And we need to factor in the fact that it'll probably take a while to get it because of... Oh, yeah, with every... Just, there's already backup from the shipping and everything, so. Okay. Um, so I move to approve the shellfish department's request for uh, a new pickup truck. For Ellen, second. All right, uh, roll call vote. John, I. Brian, I. Helen, I. Um, Michael is actually up here. Okay. Hey. Hi, Mike. Hi. I'll just abstain from that. Yeah, from the shellfish. All right. Might as you well. Ta you timed it well. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
the old shellfish office. Well, wait a minute. I, I just asked about that. So in the old shellfish building? Yes. Why is this even on here? Excuse me. Sorry. That, yeah, I think oh, that was I'm just she's Sorry. wanted to just focus on that. And that was just focused on this year, that stuff. Yeah, um, this is for um this is for this coming fiscal year, FY23. Yeah. Um it, it says here 2024. On yeah. the, the worksheet, it says it's FY23. For the old building? Yep. Yeah, it shouldn't be there for that. It's on, it's on um, 2024. Yeah. Yeah, that should be 24. Okay. Sorry. 24. Okay. Um, so before, so the shellfish. I mean, this building has gone before town meeting a number of times, and every time, um, whatever has been proposed gets turned down. Um, so um, I don't know. I move that we take no action on this and that we do not fund any repair on it until we decide whether we want to demolish it again for the fourth or fifth time. Um, Mike? Yeah. Uh... So this kind of was supposedly under consideration by a ad hoc committee to sort of come up with some plan to bring back to the select board. And that happened, you know, right before COVID. So I don't know what the status is with that, but, but we should probably get in touch with them and see where they're at on that. Um, you know, every year that goes by the building gets in worse condition, but there's never been presented a plan other than originally to uh, bring it back to its former glory um, and rehabilitate it uh, back to what it was with, which would require a septic and, and all sorts of other stuff. So I know there's been some, some consideration of, of re envisioning the use of it without, you know, public without uh, restroom facilities and stuff like that, but I, I don't really know, so. Okay, Helen? The place that, this has been looked at so carefully, it's been appraised. Uh, when I was on the select board, like seven years ago, six years ago, we really looked into it. We did decent site visits. We looked into every aspect of it. It's been discussed over and over and it's in the floodplain. And I would like to take that building and give that spot back to the beach. And we do not need another building to maintain in that spot at all. And uh, I'm not, I'm so angry about this in a funny way that I can barely speak. I, I just hope we don't vote to fund it in 2024. Certainly Mike, if the committee has been working on it, fine, but we haven't heard from them and I think there's no reasonable use for it. Uh, you know, maybe some equipment, you know, storage and stuff by the shellfish department. Well, that is just not a very nice place for anybody to be. And let me tell you, the mold issue was a contractual problem. It, having anybody work on there because of the degree of mold <laughs> and what you have to do to treat the mold, there's a lot of paperwork on this is not something we should subject our employees to, even if they feel like it. Thank you. Okay. Sorry to sound so pissed off. Uh, Mike? Yeah, uh, actually there was discussion of turning this into a sort of uh, changing room bathhouse type mm -hmm. situation with an outdoor shower. So there is a potential use and it would involve stripping all of the moldy sheetrock because that's where the mold is out of the building and uh, it's just black mold. But I, at this point, I, I think rather than, you know, going on and on about it, we should probably uh, table it for now. Okay, so I'll second Helen's motion, which was to table it. Um, so roll call vote. John, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Michael, I. Okay, motion carries four zero. Uh, it's a table. Um, so the uh, floating up Weller, um, the 
the um, finance committee did did say that there was a potential one that the town might be able to get for free from Churro. Um, can you um, fill us in on that, Chris? I believe the one they have in Truro is our old one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, yeah, the only problem, is, but luckily with the dredging and stuff, there, you know, we won't be sucking up too much mud if we got that back. But again, it's just more or less uh, that was on the wish list for like 2024 again. Yeah. So, but yeah, if, yeah, I guess we'll, I'll discuss with Nancy more that when the time comes, but that was just like a possibility, you know, even with Johnny speaking about it too. So we've been talking about it up well for a while, but I just remembered working on that uh, when we had it. And, you know, there's a lot of work that needs maintenance on it. It's a lot of work on that. Okay. People. Yeah. So to put it in shape or, or to as a general I got, I got it. Actually, it'd be interesting to see what shape it's in now. I haven't seen it recent. I haven't seen it since it left. So I don't know what the condition is, if it's even worth grabbing that thing back because there's different compartments to it. And it needs a, a motor for it in the back to keep the water going and all the compartments. So that could be something I could definitely look into. Is, is it typically a high maintenance item normally? At least three times a week, we'd have to clean the cages. The, there was a lot of squirts that would attach to the bottom. Uh, you have to clean it for the, uh, you know, clamp poop, basically. Make sure it's like, you just got to shake it. So there was, there was maintenance, but luckily we have AmeriCorps. And, you know, if we could find time, like Johnny and stuff. So there's, it could, it could work, yes. Okay. Um, do we want to do anything about this tonight? No. We're focused on 2023, aren't we? Yeah. Kind of, but um, just that, you know, the capital improvement plan goes out for five years, so. Um, I'm but, fine either way if you want, want to put it to a vote. Um, mm. I'd prefer to take no action. Uh -huh. wait, wait to get more info. Yep. Me too. And um, uh, John and Chris, in relation to Roxana Smolowitz's recent presentation. Yeah. Which had, you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, was, I was online listening. Yeah, you, that's what I meant. Um, yeah. I was online too. But the point is, we got quite a lot of information about density. Uh-huh. And I would hope that the shellfish department, which is you guys do this really well, would consider the whole big picture. And that would be in relation to having an upweller because, you know, there'd be more way to, you know, more locally grown here. Mm -hmm. But just to take everything you know about that. Okay. And so, later, what Helen, we were we're taking no action. So, just uh, move on. Thanks. Yes. Gotcha. Um, so, Will. So, Harvard Master. Um, so, you have a just gone through this. So, okay, ice machine is being researched. Yeah, the the ice machine we've gone back and forth a few times with, but. Basically, with the ice machine, um, it's been brought back that that there's a demand for it. Um, but being an enterprise fund, we need a um, you know cost estimates and things like that. But we need a, a real feasibility study um, yep. for that um, to see what the you know financial aspect of it is. Um, we we are caught in between the service to the town, but also um, profitability. So it's, it's rock and a hard place with that. Okay. Um, and then, so then I guess the, the boom truck. Yeah, that would be the, the white one that you see rotting on the pier. Um, it's, uh, we replaced the winch. Um, 
it is not inspectable. It is not roadworthy. Um, the winch works on it nice and strong, but but that's about uh, it right now. Um, the, the frame's dilapidated on that vehicle. And uh, if we if we want to keep that that sort of thing, the ability to pick up, you know, heavy objects and move them around, not not too heavy, it's not crane, but, um, you know, under a thousand pounds, just to move it around the docks, we'll, we'll need something like that. Okay, uh, Helen. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, uh, the saltwater ice machine came up when Vibrio, the whole Vibrio thing kicked in. And there is another municipality, province town Chatham, I forget. Before you do a feasibility study or in conjunction with it, get their data. But I remember a lot of people spoke very carefully and in detail about the advantages of having the saltwater ice and that it be available and who would maintain it. And at the time, the marina said yes, but that doesn't never sounded to me to be practical. So I hope we get it. And I hope that one of you remembers which town already has one. Thank you. Okay, well, I, I prefer to take no action because basically it has, this is more research is needed. I don't see why we're discussing, yeah, the type of ice it might make. Um, so uh, to the boom truck, um, and uh, the finance committee did recommend to, for this replacement as well. Um, would this be funded uh, through the Marina Enterprise Fund or um, by the town itself? I would hope to be able to fund that with, with the Marina itself, um, being as, you know, what it is and what its use is for. Um, that would just come into how we could arrange that in the budget. <clears throat> Okay, um, so I move to approve uh, the Harbor Master's request uh, to replace the 20, 2003 um, boom truck. John, second. Okay, roll call vote, please. John, I. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Colin, I. Okay, motion carries 4 0. Um, we'll skip the, um, the pickup truck replacement because that's still a ways out. Um, the, uh, I guess portable radio repairs or replacement. Um, so what's the average or what's the life of, of a radio? That I, that, that I could not tell you. Um, I know the ones we have are on their way out and they're obsolete. Um, we actually, currently as of this meeting, we don't actually have a working one uh, to communicate with the fire and police department. Um, the lifespan, the ones we have are pretty old. Um, I remember, let's see, I was on the, I was on East End Fire Department 20 years ago. We had those radios. Um, so they're probably about that old and, uh, they've lasted this long, but these are, these are to communicate with police and fire and well fleet. Okay. So, um, I would just say that, um, it seems that the emergency response departments, uh, um, are regularly replacing radios. Um, and it would make more sense to me if it, if it ended up as, uh, operational, uh, in the ops budget, as opposed to a budget coming out of capital funds. Um, but uh, John? Yeah, the, <clears throat> in re excuse me. <clears throat> in reading through uh, the other departments, it's evident that the police and fire departments radios are not only uh, reaching the end of their useful life, their manufacturers are no longer supporting them with uh, repairs and parts. And uh, that's probably going to be found to be true for the marina's radios. And I know the, the uh, ship to shore radio on my boat is from 2006, and that's starting to give me trouble. So it's probably a good plan to coordinate the replacement of these radios with the other departments. OK, uh, so I moved to, to approve the Harbor Master's request for uh, radio replacements. I want second. OK, roll call vote. John, I. Ryan, I. Aye. 
Helen? Okay, motion carries four zero. Um, so the higher needs assessment assessment consultant, um, I guess this probably doesn't belong in a uh, capital um, improvement plan. Um, no. I would say that um, until the, the Marina um, Advisory Committee completes the work that was requested of them, um, I'm hesitant to fund a, a consultant. Um, John? That, that was, uh, I, I, I kind of highlighted this in red when I was reading through it, that uh, it seems that that's why we have a Marina Advisory Committee. Um, and yeah, I'd like to wait until we get all on the same page with this and see what they have to say okay. before we spend money on a consultant that we might not need. Yeah. They've actually been pretty vocal about that on their meetings. Oh, that they, they want to have one? Uh, that they don't feel that the task given to them is appropriate for them to handle. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I'm going to request to be on on an agenda for them, yeah. for the advisory committee to just sort of go over what we're looking for. Cause I think there was some confusion about uh, the select board asking them to come up with a, a basic management plan and them uh, sort of think, uh, at least Joe uh, thinking that we were asking them to come up with a, a Marina master plan, which would be sort of what you'd hope that would come out of a management plan in the future where you may need consulting uh, to sort of determine or, or some, or to pay for some feasibility studies to determine if things that are the goals and, and wants of, uh, of the committee um, to be implemented and the Harbor Master as well. So um, I, I think that you know, it's a little early for, for asking for consulting. Um, so I, I move to uh, remove um, the request for the Marina consultant from uh, the FY23 capital improvement plan. I'll one second. Okay, roll call vote. John and I. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Um, Ryan, may, may I make a very brief comment? Okay. Um, you know, I've been on these committees, these advisory committees. And you can, within the committee, you can sort yourselves out and do a whole lot of research. You can check in with other municipalities and you don't need a consultant. I mean, you might have to have some questions answered by someone who knows more. You can invite them in and have a session with them. Maybe a couple of people over, you know, a series of months. But I'm kind of fed up with people on these committees thinking they don't actually have to work and learn. I know I'm a curmudgeon. I feel lousy tonight. Thank you for letting me vent. Okay. Um, so the replacement of the security system or security camera system. Yeah, the, the cameras are um, obsolete. Uh, basically limited, limited functioning. Um, you know, just like our, our internet down there, um, the cameras go through that system, bounce off the, from our building to the fire tower down to, you know, station, then back to us to even get that, that kind of um, information. Um, basically, you know, the, the cameras are watching over millions and millions of dollars worth of property and liability. Um, they're really old. There's not even like a formatted system to take care of them or even to, to touch them. So when, when you really need to get, get involved with that and get on board with a uh, program to replace the cameras. Um, so you said that the they're using the internet services down there, which is not great? Correct. Okay, so a more modern camera will take additional bandwidth um, so until the internet services are upgraded, um, any new installation of cameras just will not work consistently. Um, so I would, I would say that the, the internet system needs to be upgraded first. Um, John? 
Yeah, I was, I was going to say, if they're tied in together, uh, is there a way that this can be um, brought into this uh, into the, into this proposal to upgrade the internet at the same time? Because uh, it would be nice to get that, but get both of them done. They, I, I agree with, uh, with the harbor master. It really is long overdue. Okay. It's a, uh, it's a well, mess. Do you have any response to that? I'm, I'm all for up, upgrading everything at the marina. Um, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much all. You want to upgrade something? Let me know. I'm on board. But um, we do need, we can search it out and, and figure out who can upgrade. We're, we're on a microwave system, basically. I don't understand any of that um, on how that works, but we can check with county even more to find out what we can do or what they could recommend that we do to upgrade that entire uh, network and platform down there. Okay, Mike. Yeah, I was just going to say it surprised me that we wouldn't be able to get high speed broadband at the pier um to run security cameras uh for relatively you know relatively easily considering there's broadband all around that area so I, i'm not sure what the system is but i imagine even if a new camera's system is going to use more bandwidth um it may be the the operating system that it's currently functioning on that that can't carry it uh, rather than the actual internet service? I don't really know. Um, but it, I, I'm, I'm guessing 30,000 is an, is an estimate. Do you have a solid number on that, Will? Or is, no, no. So maybe we can just you know, ensure that we're going to be able to utilize the cameras, because I think it's a good idea um, to have working functioning cameras down there, um, you know, utilize, be able to utilize them have the capacity um, before we actually put it on on uh, or, or approve the the purchase of it, I guess. So uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind approving this, but it's 2024 anyway. Yeah. So you know, by the time 2024 rolls around, um, can you just? figure out if uh, we can get some high-speed broadband down there. <laughs> yeah, that, that was why we kind of pushed it back a whole another year, um, yeah. just, just because of that that fact. We want to dial this in and uh, get um, it. Huh? But we yeah, to um, you, I heard what you said, Will, uh, about needing the surveillance, and you need it now. Uh, through you to Charlie, um, through you, Ryan, to Charlie. Charlie, I mean, isn't this what IT does in part? Can't you send IT down there or get him or her? Well, Ryan, why are you shaking your head? Who can who can go down there and see it's, what's going on? They, they don't have a hard line um, servicing these cameras. So they're dependent upon the microwave emitters of the cameras communicating with some, some other thing. And with those, you're you only have so much broad, uh, bandwidth based on what the uh, antenna is generating for a signal. Yes, but my point is, um, isn't there some workaround that some techie tech person can figure out? No. Okay, great. Thank you. I mean, the workaround would be installing cables. Okay, how much does that cost? You know, yeah, I was gonna say, it might be worth having someone from Barnstable County and Open Cape take a look at it with Will and myself. So maybe I can work on that with Will. Okay, so um, I, I move to request that the Harbor Master include an upgrade of the marina's um, internet services um, to be included with or to be um, programmed oh, yeah. along with the replacement of the security camera system. Helen, second. Okay. Nice uh, John, you're muted. Can you unmute John, Rebecca? Okay. Uh, roll call yeah. vote. Okay. Roll call oh, oh, John, vote. John, I. Okay. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Okay. Motion carries 4 0. Um, skip we can skip um because that's a ways out um so council on aging um this is suzanne's not on um so yeah 
Okay. Um, so the first one is um, a feasibility study. Um, and so Mike was a little bit late in joining us, Charlie. Um, so can you um, repeat what you said about studies and the, the capital improvement plan? Yeah, well, thank you. Yes. Um, so in talking with Fred McGee, of the chair of the finance committee, I think the idea was, is, is this element of the cost appropriate for the, you know, capital plan? And should it, shouldn't that just be a separate warrant article on town meeting floor, not included in the capital plan? That seems to make sense. Um, so anyway, that's, that's all I have to say about that. Mm -hmm. Um, Helen? Uh, okay, are we still doing the feasibility study? I'm interested in the second one. We're still doing the feasibility study right now. I would like to table it. Okay. Um, where are the other board members on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it probably isn't capital improvement. Okay. Okay, so I move to table uh, the feasibility study for the adult community center. Helen second. Okay, roll call vote. John I. Michael I. Ryan I. Helen I. Okay, um, so the um, air scrubbers on the Havoc system. Um, so I'm actually gonna ask Jay a question first before we get into this. So Jay, let's see if I ca catch him napping or not. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> um, so as part of the DPW facilities um, request, it includes uh, upgrade of the HAVAC system um, at the senior center or at the adult community center as well. Um, so I'm a little confused why there are two separate requests for, um, for upgrading the HAVAC system in some shape or form. And you're muted. Can you unmute him, Rebecca? Can you hear me now? Yep. All right. How you doing, everybody? Good. Um, How are you? So the uh, the difference between those two, the HVAC system upgrades are related to the condensing units uh, for the HVAC and some thermostat upgrades. The air scrubber that uh, is the line item you're talking about now is to provide some disinfection um, for the air system for air quality. Uh, similar to what we did at the library. Is, uh, John? Uh, is this related to some of the mold issues that we saw when you took, uh, you know, a few of us around to show us the, uh, or, or when we, we, we went over to the COA, this is back in uh, early July. No, this is related to more, it's more of a COVID thing. Um, just to clean the air from particulates, viruses, bacteria, um, that type of system. It, it uses UV light to disinfect the air. Right. Um, so that the mold that you guys saw was mainly mildew. I went over there after. Um, we do have that, the air ducts inspected every year and cleaned out. Um, and it was also very, very humid that day you guys were there. So this is this is more just for general air quality, but it, it would kill mold if it was present in the in the air. The condensing unit issues are what? They're just aging out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mike? Yeah, I was just wondering if there's, you know, funding available for something like this through um, the uh, most recent COVID bill where there's money sort of trickling out and we should probably keep an eye on that um, because it is exactly the type of things that I think were intended to be funded um, through uh, the American Rescue Plan. I think, is that what it was called? ARPA? Yeah, we've already dedicated all those funds to go to the Affordable Housing Trust. Well, the funds that came in to the town, but uh, I, I believe there's some other grant monies that may be uh, applicable to apply for uh, um, systems in the future uh, to improve uh, COVID safety and, and, and stuff like that. So, um, um, 
so Jay, um, I, I would assume that this would be done at the same time that the condenser units were to be replaced or is, would it be done by separate contractors? Um, it, it would most likely be the same contractor, but it doesn't necessarily have to be at the same time because um, they're two unrelated um, projects, but it could be done at the same time. Okay. Um, so to me, it would almost make sense, more sense to combine the two projects. Um, but um, Helen? Yeah, I accept for one thing. Um, there are more old people at the senior center and it isn't just about what we're going through with the current pandemic. This is going to become, this is gonna happen more often. It's just gonna be normal life one way or another. And I feel that all public buildings should have improved ventilation. It's all about that, particularly if we're gonna to be told we have to go back to live meetings. Um, but the senior center is different because although I feel all our workplaces should have improved ventilation that addresses this kind of thing, pathogens. The places where all people congregate, particularly if they're exercising, doing yoga, dancing, doing whatever they do, we know what the COA is used for often, um, really needs, despite the high ceilings, really needs extra attention. So I think that we should go ahead and do it as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, so I move to combine the um, air filtration system upgrade um, with the HAVAC system upgrade at the Adult Community Center. Helen second. Okay, roll call vote. John I. <clears throat> Michael, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Okay, motion carries 4 0. Um, and I, I guess I would, so that we don't have to do it later, I move to um, approve the HAVEC system upgrades for the adult community center. Second. Okay. Okay. Roll call vote. John, I. Ryan, I. Michael, I. Helen I. Okay, motion carries 4-0. Uh, also, I was mistaken. The grant that I was looking at prior was uh, for, for schools and education systems. So I don't know if it's applicable. Um, so okay. I apologize for that. Um, so health and conservation. Um... Oh, yeah. Permitting software. Um, She's not, Hillary's not on. Um, um, I, I would say that the um, OpenGov is one of the platforms that the town could choose to switch to, to basically service all the departments. Um, but that is that to me is a, a larger con conversation as to what platform the town ultimately chooses to modernize our functions um, and to have separate software solutions for different departments will result in increased costs um, and lower um, abilities and reduce communication across the departments. Um, so um, I, I would like to table table this um, until we, I would assume this would be high on the next town administrator's priority um, in choosing a platform for the town. Um, so I would like to table this um, at this time. Um. <clears throat> yes, Helen? Um, I feel a, it, what you say sounds sensible, Ryan. But I'm uneasy because Hillary isn't here. And I don't know if there's special oh. things that make it more important for them. And it's unfortunate, but I would like not to table it, but maybe ultimately not pass it on to the next stage when we get input from Hillary. Um, I just need to know more. I mean, this is not how you choose a software solution for the town. Um, 
do we need a you know it, it open does it does provide a, a pretty comprehensive software solution um i mean it could be applied to the the accounting department the basically all the departments um and if we you know have a software solution put in place just to service one department um it becomes problematic mike yeah i this is this uh nancy vale had uh brought before us last year uh before town meeting a uh software system that would be town wide um i spoke to the assistant town administrator at some point i don't know if rebecca's on here um and you know she had stated basically unequivocally that we would sort of need to do a more comprehensive uh like um uh evaluation request for proposals um and sort of decide which company we'd want to use for something like that um because it's fairly expensive um so i i'm i'm not really sure exactly where to go with this but i, I think that we do need to have a a town-wide um piece of software that that's functional inter interdepartmentally yeah it, it could be this the software provider, but um, you know that that's still ways out. Um, Helen. Yeah. So why don't we go for that this year? Why don't we um, go for that and be efficient and get it to be better? How much more would it cost? We're, we're not. So we're nowhere close to being ready to do a software transition right now. Um, but I'll let Charlie speak. Yeah, there's no argument, right? Um, that um, it seems that um, that we we need to move to a platform uh, that's comprehensive and global throughout the community. So Hillary's right; we need to do something. I, I just you're not going to be ready for the 2022 annual town meeting. So, and 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 frankly, I don't have the expertise or skills or time, more importantly, to work collaboratively with everybody. But maybe we can start that process of having our department heads, maybe um, using Rebecca roughly uh, to really go out and evaluate um, systems and vendors and report back to the select board mm -hmm. um, and give you a better sense of where you want to go over time. Yeah. Because if we do a software implementation and then next year we decide to do a different software implementation, um, I mean, they're basically it, need on the drain. Yep. Um, Rebecca Eldridge. I just wanted to let you know that Hillary was on the call. Okay. Oh, no, Hillary is here. Yeah, she just joined. Um, so I, I would move to table this. Um, so I move to table um, the request for implementing OpenGov um, for the Health and Conservation Department. John, second. Can we hear from Hillary briefly? Uh, this during this discussion gap moment, please. Okay, uh, Hillary, would you care to speak on this at all? Can you try unmuting her? Yep, she's unmuted. She just has to do it. Okay. Um, there she is. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. So we had put in the capital request. I think this is the second year um, that we're requesting this, and it's online permitting software. It's imperative for the functionality of our department and efficiency. Um, I think it would make the department health building and conservation run uh, a lot smoother with lack of redundancy amongst office staff searching for permits, searching for information. Um, and it would take our departments to a new level and offer new services. Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, you know, this is something that the town has to implement a town wide solution for. Um, 
and to continue to have different departments use different solutions is is not the way forward. It, it could definitely be OpenGov. Um, there, you know, they have a number of implementations for a number of Massachusetts towns, um, but at, at a, I mean, we're just not ready right now to do it. To, to do a town-wide software implementation. Um, well, I think though, Ryan, our thought was that whatever sections of the open gov we get now, it can be added to. So it seemed to make sense to move forward with the health building and conservation department because it's a, it's a module in and of itself that can be added to with the other departments when and if they're ready. But, but it's really becoming difficult to function um, in our departments without some type of online permitting software. So we have an Excel spreadsheet and it, it doesn't have any capacity to do what we need it to do. Yeah, I mean, I would just say if we're looking to add functionality to this at a later date, we're essentially committing to this platform um, to, to service the town's needs. Um, and so I don't know, but um, Mike, uh, I just, I, I had talked to, I don't know if you caught this before, Hillary, but I had talked to Rebecca roughly last year when we were talking about OpenGov, when Nancy brought it to us, and she had mentioned that she thought that we'd need to have a procurement process to do a town-wide, um, and I don't want to put words in her mouth, but, uh, you know, as far as I remember, uh, procurement process to provide town-wide software, and that we should be seeking proposals from multiple vendors um, prior to committing to one. Um, and uh, so I think we need to get that process started and I, I have no problem uh, getting that going uh, right now. I just don't know if we can just choose OpenGov. I mean, I guess we could, but I, I, I don't know. I think Charlie has to talk to Rebecca about that and, and see if we can do that um, because I, from what I remember, the costs are uh, involved require some procurement process, which would involve separate vendors. So if we just went with, you know, one section of OpenGov and then wound up choosing another vendor uh, for the rest of town, or even including that town and switching software again, it, it would be a problem. So um, I don't know where to go from here, except that we should really get started on this. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, John? Does this tie in with um, what we were talking about earlier, uh, the internet service at the marina and so forth? No. No. Okay. Um, yeah. Helen? Um, yeah. Why don't we encumber the money? Clearly, to my mind, you would have to do a procurement process. I was listening very carefully when Nancy talked about it and encumber the money so we don't have to wait a whole other year to ATM annual town meeting, um, you know, the a, over a year from now, a year and a half from now. So um, the so we just encumber the money. We don't have to spend it this year, but at least it would be, you know, there if we could move ahead after a procurement process. The, the town needs to get out of a practice of approving monies for projects before the project's been, <clears throat> you know, appro approved or, or, or otherwise, you're just increasing the cost of the taxpayer and the ultimate cost is probably going to be higher um, than what this capital improvement request is if we're doing it across the town. I take so. your point, but I think that there's a certain amount of urgency here. We've now heard from not just Hillary, but we heard from Nancy and, you know, she had gathered input from other departments. And this is not, do we maybe need it? It's we need it and we need it um, to happen well. So there's, it's not a question of whether we need it or not. Thank you. Okay, so I move to table. Um, the request to purchase a license for open gov. Is uh, there a second? 
Yeah, I'll second that, but on the condition that we begin the process of, 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 of a procurement to choose a vendor. Yes, I agree with that as well, so. Could that be a second motion? No, we'll do it all as one motion there. So the motion's amended. Um, so can I have a roll call vote? John, under those circumstances, yeah, John, I. Okay. Mike? Michael, I. Ryan, I. Uh, I don't want to table it, so I'm going to vote now. Okay, motion carries 3 1. So we are on to uh, the police department. So the chief is on vacation um, this week. Um, so we'll actually be covering the police department. Um, next week at uh, that next week's meeting right. we have so many meetings at this point I'm, yeah <laughs> uh please please um so i believe fire is next um yep fire and rescue um so chief polly um and um yeah Um, good evening, Chief. How are you? Uh, I can't hear you. You're, you're unmuted, but we're not getting any sound. Chief, if you go up into the left-hand corner, you might see a little speaker. If you hit that, that could be your issue. Um, maybe you should, can you call in chief? Hold on, I just unmuted him again. Try it again, chief. You have to unmute. Chief has to unmute. Life in the day of Zoom. You should have permission to unmute, Chief. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. I apologize. You would have thought I had this worked out by now. Um, I, and, not, and not to, I was just going to offer that uh, Lieutenant LaRocco's on. I don't know if he's prepared to talk about the police department requests, if that would be helpful to the board or to the police department. I, I just noted that. Yeah, uh, Chief Hurley actually requested that um, it be done on the 13th, so. That, that's fine. I apologize. Oh, no worries. It's always good to double check, so. Um, so the ambulance replacement. So so this ambulance, Mr. Chair and members of the board, um, was supposed to be replaced last year. Uh, that didn't happen because of the depletion of the ambulance receipts fund. We all think know that story. Uh, I was hoping to put it on a special town meeting uh, in the fall, and we couldn't have that. Uh, the ambulance now um, is basically going to be two years out of our replacement schedule. Uh, high mileage, we're already starting to see electrical issues with it and, and um, air conditioning and heating issues with it. We will have enough money in the ambulance replacement fund um, by the April town meeting. Uh, realizing that once the ambulance is even ordered, it's probably a year out, which is the longest I've ever seen in my career of, of, of building the ambulance. Usually it's six to seven months. So th that's the story on the ambulance. Okay. Um, how much is in the ambulance fund? I, no. last, last time I checked, uh, we were just about uh, 300 and uh, just, just around 300,000 and by, uh, April town meeting, we should be right up around, uh, 380 to maybe even 400,000, uh, you know, just in projection of, uh, past history. Okay. Um, so I move to approve the capital improvement request to replace ambulance 97. All in second. 
Okay, roll call vote. John, I. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. All right. Which one's next? Sorry, I'm scrolling. Uh, amp, or engine ninety five. Yep, and and then this is this is this is the tough for one of the two only, and and really because of the price tag more than anything else. Uh, engine ninety five is a nineteen ninety eight uh, HME General. Um, it, it it's a hybrid of two manufacturers. Uh, one of which the manufacturer is is no longer uh, building vehicles. It's out of uh, it's gone out of business. Uh, the, the history behind this truck was they, at the time many appropriated some amount of money to replace this truck in 1997. And it was determined at the next time meeting there wasn't not, not enough money. There wasn't enough money to build the truck. So they had to come back with uh, additional appropriation and also cut back on basically the quality of the spec. Uh, so now um, it, it's, it's been a, a, a little problematic from day one, but we've been able to work through it. It's the second two engine out. Uh, to fire calls, and it's the primary engine from all motor vehicle crashes because it handles all of our uh, rescue equipment, uh, the jaws of life, uh, cribbing, um, uh, struts, and, and major rescue equipment. So uh, the truck is um, going to be over 26 years old. Uh, National Fire Protection Association um, uh, recommendations are that trucks of, of this caliber should not go more than 20 years old. Uh, again, even if we're fortunate enough to get approval added at town meeting, we're looking at probably a year and a half before this truck ever sees the streets of Wellfleet, would be my sense. Okay. And then, Chief, um, will we be replacing it with a new build or um, a used vehicle? This, this will be a brand new vehicle. Okay. Um, I think that, that's very appropriate for the community. You know, we'll get 20 years out of the new truck, 20, 22 years, I'm sure, with the new technology and, and the new construction methods. You know, as, as, you, re, as you may recall, I, I, I recommended that we go with a, a used ladder truck um, a couple years back, and, and that meets our needs, and we saved a significant amount of money, and we're about ready to finish that process up in terms of refurbing it. So that made a lot of sense to save the town three-quarters of a million dollars. Uh, in this case, I can't make that recommendation to go a used engine. Uh, the, it's just it's it's just that mo much more critical and used on a more regular basis. Okay, so it's essentially used every day. Uh, it's it's used very frequently. Yes, it's it's, it's certainly uh, it, it's driven every day. Um, it's used uh, several times a week on motor vehicle crashes, or again when the primary engine is out for maintenance or out of service. Um, it's the second two truck in the fleet, so it has it has a high use. Um, okay. um, are there any questions from the board? Okay, so I move to approve the replacement of engine 95. Helen, second. Okay, roll call vote. John, I. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Okay, motion carries 4 0. Uh, radio replacement. Um, so before you so this is so this should be the last year of this, right? That is correct. We we have um, over basically over a, a, a four to five year plan have allocated so much money uh, and kept it in the kitty, if you will, in the capital fund uh, for radio replacements. Um, so this is uh, should be the very last year. This is year five of the five year project. Uh, in addition, we were fortunate enough we got notified uh, a couple weeks ago that we received about $74,000 in grants for radios. Uh, you know, in, in previous discussions, I can't promise this, but my intention certainly is if we have money left over um, to work with certainly the Harbor Master um, on his radio request. But again, not knowing that we're gonna have that money left over, um, we need to finish up this project. Uh, this is a very, very um, expensive project, but it is one that we need to to get accomplished as well as all Cape Cod fire and police departments to maintain our abil abilities to communicate with dispatch, with county, uh, basically be in, in communicate with each other. So I, I know this has been a long haul and I, the, the townspeople have been very supportive of it. I, this is, I, my plan is that this is the last year you'll hear from me on this issue. Okay, uh, John. Yeah, um, you mentioned the Harbor Master's office. Even if the 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 uh, grant doesn't extend over to them, can you, you would you be coordinating with them as to the 
brand and type of radio so that you're all on the same page? Uh, certainly, John, that's that's our intention. Will and I talk on a regular basis on a whole number of issues and you know, getting the same models, uh, the same technology, it just makes so much more sense. Okay, so I move to approve the request for uh, radio replacements. John, second. Okay, roll call vote. John, I. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Okay, uh, purchase a replacement of mobile, mobile data terminals. Yeah, so you'll see this about every, uh, about two or three times uh, in the capital plan, about every five to seven years, the mobile data terminals are what we utilize on a daily basis in the ambulances. They're required for us to submit our uh, ambulance reports uh, to the hospital. It's required by the state. They won't accept them any other way because th that information has to be transferred up to the state for quality control and, uh, and review. But also as part of the MDTs, uh, we also have iPads in the vehicles that we're allowed to communicate directly from Barnstable County Dispatch. So basically, um, for lack of a better term, it, it, it's a very, very fancy GIS system uh, that basically directs us in the direction of a particular address. It gives hydrant locations. It gives very, very important information. And it, like anything else with technology moving along, we have to re put money in every two or three years to uh, upgrade these um, these systems. And, and the, you know, the nine years I've been here, we've done MDT upgrades uh, at, at least three times. And uh, it, it's it's just something that we have to do. It's, it's They get a lot of wear and tear and technology is always moving ahead of us. Okay, uh, how many are there? Uh, let me see, we have um, approximately uh, eight MDTs uh, that are in the field. And then we have uh, eight to 10 iPads that are also in the major apparatus and in the uh, response vehicles. They do two separate things. The MDTs are required uh, for ambulance reports um, in that um, EMS um, software reporting. So we have to have a number of those that are available. And then the iPads are the separate piece of technology on the vehicles that connect directly with Barnstable County Sheriff's Office and provide our GS, GIS mapping systems um, and uh, pre-plans and things of that nature. Okay. Um, and if I may, Mr. Chair, if you ever told, yep. if, you ever, if, if anyone ever told me in years ago that I'd have two computers basically on a truck, I'd say you're out of your mind. <laughs> so it's... It's, um, it's just the way that the, 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 the uh, technology is evolving in emergency services. Um, so this is just gonna be a general comment and not, uh, I, I do support the replacement of these. I, I'm just wondering if based on the lifespan of the devices and the number of them, um, if it might make more sense just to do a certain number each year um, and to level, you know, and to include that as part of uh, operations budget. Um, going forward rather than a capital item uh, that's certainly something we can look look towards you know and, and certainly take a, a solid look at uh, moving forward okay um so i move to approve the capital requests for the m or for mdts and uh tech upgrades one second roll call vote Aye. Aye. um Michael, I, but I have a question. Um, typically when we do these, we kind of like approve the, the budget, but each itemized thing for, I mean, for the capital improvement plan, we approve the plan regarding some other things, but um, I don't know if we take stuff that's like from 2024 typically and, and vote to, to uh, approve the request at this point, but I don't, I don't really remember. I think we usually just do the, the current fiscal year. Yeah, this one's for the current fiscal year. Oh, it's not for 2024? No. Am I looking at something else? Th there's additional what? Uh, oh, okay, all right, I understand. Okay, I. Okay, uh, roll call, uh, yeah. So, uh, Ryan, I. I want I. John, did you vote? Yes, I voted I. Okay, sorry. Uh, motion carries four zero. Um, 
a replacement of hose. Do, do we need to have this item presented or, or can we just vote for replacing it? Okay, so I move to approve the replacement of the four inch diameter hose and attack hose. Helen, I. I Helen, second. Okay, roll call vote. John, I. Michael, I. Brian, I. Helen, I. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, every. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Is that it for this? Uh, that is, I believe, that is it for us uh, for the fire department. Well, this yeah. rest is in twenty twenty four for yeah. the for the upcoming fiscal year. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I would just want to bring up one one thing before we move on on the fire departments. Um, so you have ambulance ninety nine. Um, in 2025, uh, I, I would expect that we're still facing the same um, delayed uh, replacement cycle as in- If I may, Mr. Chair, yeah, if I may, Mr. Chair, this, this is a mistake on my part. Somehow, and I just discovered it today, this afternoon, I was reviewing the information that I missed an ambulance replacement between the current year that I'm asking for and Ambulance 99. Somehow it did not get into the, uh, at the last version, it did not get into the spreadsheet and that's totally on me and I apologize. So um, if we replace the ambulance 97 in the upcoming fiscal year, we're gonna need to replace, replace I'm sorry, ambulance 98 no later than two years from now. But again, if we leave the ambulance fund, receipts fund untouched, uh, relatively untouched, then we'll have the ability to do that and then continue to con move on with additional ambulance replacements down the years um, out of that fund. So I apologize for that and not getting you that information. That's totally on me. It, it, it was my uh, honest mistake. Okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering with the delivery cycle, you know. You know, I, uh, if, I, if I can, I don't want to belay, belay this. I know the board's got a big, big agenda. You know, I, I'm, I'm truly hoping that we're, this is just an anomaly and hope, and I'm hoping, but this is something that we're on top of on a regular basis, as we're talking with our vendors and our man and manufacturers reps, that um, we'll be working through this. I say as a country in terms of supply, you know, in the next 18 months to two years, and and be back on a more normal schedule, if you will. But I can assure you that you know all your public safety and your public works people, um, chiefs are, are looking at all of this stuff because. It's something that I know I never again would have expected to experience in my career as a fire chief. Okay. Well, I guess don't go anywhere yet too. Um, but I, I assume that we're done with the fire department for tonight. Is that every, all right? Um, so public works, um, have X system upgrade at the fire department. So Jay? Sure, thanks Mr. Chair. Um, so the, the fire department at $80,000 was actually appropriated back in 2019. However, there was no source for the funding identified. So the money was never available to us. So this is just an, uh, a request to get it back on the capital plan with a funding source identified this time and uh, for some much needed upgrades at the fire department. And I'm sure the chief could attest to that. Okay. Um, is it going to make the, the current system um, operate at a lower cost, I guess? It's going to help the uh, system operate <laughs> to begin with. If, <laughs> yeah, if, if I may, um, the, this, this system has been problematic since day one. I don't want to go into the details but it has never worked efficiently since the day the town took the building. And then there were two uh, vendors or manufacturers that were part of the HVAC system, to my understanding, both went bankrupt. Um, it's, and what happens is when you get, particularly the change of the seasons, when you go from uh, winter to spring and from fall to winter, the system gets all out of whack. And we've actually had to buy four or $500 in little fans uh, to keep the place under basically 80 degrees in the summertime and open up windows. The, the system has just been fraught with issues. This has been an issue that Jay and I talked about. Uh, Mark Vincent and I worked on. Um, I think the system is quite frankly, in my uh, opinion, 
I think it's all over-engineered. Um, and with the over-engineering comes lots of uh, things that can go wrong. And what has been able to go wrong has gone wrong. And you know, we've been very patient in the last 12 years now since we occupied the building in 2008. But we got to figure this thing out because it's becoming highly problematic and it takes up a lot of time on the public works department um, and, and also with, with, uh, with a couple of our people to try to make this right. Um, okay. Uh, John? John? Yeah, um, yeah Chief, you, uh, through you to the Chief. Uh, chief, I, I recall uh, going over some of this stuff with you a few years ago. Um, and I, I, I can attest to the fact that it is grossly over-engineered. Um, uh, it's, it seemed like when that building was planned and, and this stuff was laid out, it sort of became a playground for people, for people in the HVAC industry to sort of experiment. Uh, I, I hope that uh, going forward, simple is good becomes which word. So, and, and if I may, again, not to belabor the point, but one of the, one of the things that I do understand is that this system is all computer driven. And um, whenever we have a, a power glitch or we lose power, um, we have to trace it right back to um, the one of the vendors. And, and everyone knows that we have power out here, electricity, if you will, that is what we call gray electricity, or it, it, it has, you know, out this end of the Cape, it, it's not it's not efficient. And whenever you have a power glitch or a power outage, it throws the computers haywire. And I'd like to get it off the computer system and just do a simple regular method of, if possible, of thermostats that is a, basically a basic zone system. Uh, it's, I don't know if we can do that, but you know that's my goal because I'm, I'm all done with computer controls for the HVAC system for this building. It's okay. been, a, been a problem since day one. Um, so I move to approve uh, the Havoc system upgrades for the fire department. All in second. Okay, roll call vote. John and I. Michael, I. Brian, I. Helen, I. Okay, motion carries 4 0. Uh, so the Havoc system upgrades for the COA, we've already approved. Um, I would just say that um, it needs to be amended to 35,000. Um, because the filter system was for 10. Wait a minute, uh, which line is that three? Uh, I'm not looking at lines. E, fire station, three, four, and five. I, I don't know where you are, Helen. Yeah. That, okay. HVAC system upgrades at the COA. That's where I am. Yeah, that's where I am too. Got it. Okay. Five thousand. So it, it just needs to be amended to thirty-five thousand. Um, but otherwise, we already voted on it. Because we moved the other one to BPW. Yep. To combine the two. Got it. Thanks. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, um, transfer station feasibility study. Um, this is one, again, where the, where the finance committee um, thinks it should be a, a separate warrant article um, and not part of the capital budget. Um, I agree with that. Okay. Yep, um, fine. Before we move, uh, so I would just say, just for the sake of time, um, Rather than discuss this at a later date, um, are we in support of the feasibility study? No. I think it would come to us at a, at, as a Warren article. Yep. So we can just decide then. Okay. Mr. Chair, can I just give a brief explanation? Yep. Um, so there's some building requests that we had on there, um, $230,000 for an equipment storage building that we deferred a few years, um, basically to analyze the function and efficiency of the transfer station. Um, the town of Dennis went through a similar exercise with their facility 
and I don't know if anybody of you have been there, but it turned out to be a, a, a pretty incredible um, functioning transfer station. Not saying that ours isn't, um, but it, it provides an opportunity to look at the space, um, you know, for travel, for safety, um, looking at the, you know, there's a lot of land there that um, could be reorganized uh, to provide certain other functions like composting or having a regionalized composting area um, on the outer Cape that could provide more revenues to the town. So it's, you know, it's thinking like that, um, which is why we wanted to uh, look into, you know, a study before we invest in any more infrastructure there. Okay, um, so Helen? Yeah, um, Jay, respectfully, before you came, um, and thank goodness you're here now. <laughs> thank uh, you. <laughs> something like what you just said, a regional composting facility was looked into in huge detail. Roger Putnam uh, jump-started it. So before we start paying some group or consultant to do a feasibility study and $50,000 a chunk of change, you guys know, or that is to say people in the DPW department, I'm sorry to refer to you as you guys, have a sense of, what might be better and having a consultant hold a mirror up for you you can just look in the mirror yourself i'm sorry to be such a curmudgeon and if you want to know about for example having a regional composting thing go back into the archives the meetings on that the presentations and look at what came up because it didn't seem as if it was financially viable for Wellfleet to do it, particularly not that close to the Herring River. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Alan. Mike? Yeah, I just want to point out that the feasibility study is not just for a compo regional composting, but okay. also the entire site layout, design, and operations. Uh, it's an entire it's a feasibility study to to um, to best lay out and and uh, best plan for future operations uh, on a technical level um, because you know Mike Sakali does a great job down there but you know having somebody who actually is a site design professional uh, come down, and take a look at it and say like, you know, these are the recommendations that we have, you know, and, and base that on what the, the wants of the department and the DPW who can say, hey, look, we, we see this, we want, we want to go this direction, having a site design professional um, down there to set, sort of lay it out um, makes a lot of sense to me. Um, may I respond okay. to that, please? Um, one minute, Helen. Um, so, the finance committee actually recommends doing the feasibility study before we do um, some building construction. Um, that is that is included in the capital improvement plan as well. It's it's in their their report. Um, so um, I, I I think. I, I would actually like to move to insert and recommend an article into the warrant now, um, but Helen? Yeah, um, I'm for that. Let the people decide. But through you to Jay, Jay, what I said before, and Mike, I know that it wasn't just for the composting, but that was an example about, we already know about this. I think that if people in the DPW go and do site visits to other people's, you know, other DPW, you know, transfer stations, for example, and so forth, that you think are functioning well, your eyes will give you information that you don't have to pay $50,000 for. And I think that there are enough smart people in your department to really do a lot of that yourselves. I would be surprised if there weren't. So, you know, you can consult with people in other departments and so forth. I'm not big on always handing things to consultants who come in and very often aren't aware 
with the depth that you need to be aware of what your needs really are. That takes time, and I think it wastes time, and it costs money. Thank you. Okay, Mike, and then I'm going to make a motion. Okay, quickly. I'll be quick. Um, to that point, I mean, they'd be working directly with the DBW and the transfer station. And also, uh, you know, just hiring a, a civil engineer to do a site design on a small residential property can be somewhere around $10,000. So, I mean, $50,000 is, uh, sounds about right to do a study and then uh, a site design. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, we don't actually know if it's feasible to do uh, a, a regional composting at the transfer station. And I've seen uh, a large scale composting um, situation uh, when I lived up in Vermont and um, it was pretty profitable and it's still operating today. They did move it, but uh, Interville compost is, is still operating now uh, profitably. So um, I think it's worth looking into. Okay, so I move to approve and insert an article into the, or I move to approve, insert, and recommend an article into the 2022 annual town meeting warrant and the amount of 50,000 um, to hire a site design professional um, and experience in transfer station operations and development um, to conduct a um, feasibility study on the focus uh, on the functionality, safety, and efficiency um, of the present day operations and for future opportunities for, to improve um, and enhance services. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Uh, uh, John, I. Mike. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Ellen. Ellen, I. And uh, what Mike just suggested, it's not feasible. We determined that years ago. It was done properly. Okay, motion carries four zero. Well, we're not discussing composting right now. So, <laughs> Mr. Um, Chair, can I just mention one yep. thing? I'm actually trying to get my hands on the study that Dennis did. Um, so, when I do receive those documents I can forward along to the board just for their uh, information. Okay. Um, so uh, the bandstand awning replacement. Um. So I believe the finance committee did not recommend to move forward with that. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, this was a request from the rec department. Um, we put it under our capital be because it was building related. Um, the basis behind it was that the structure for the awning is all rusted. Um, we visited the site with the with Victor, uh, the building commissioner, the interim building commissioner, and he dis he deemed it that you know it needed to be replaced. Um, the actual deck and um, platform area is in great shape. It's basically just the structure, uh, the overhead structure. Um, so it was decided to originally to replace it with a, you know, a canvas type um, awning again, um, but to be more permanent and less maintenance, um, it was a collaborative decision to move forward with a wooden framed structure similar to what the uh, new pavilion at Bakersfield looks like. Um, the other thing with this is that there could be uh, revenue opportunities uh, for certain events, weddings, um, to make it more desirable for people to want to um, congregate there. Um, so that's kind of where that ended up. Okay, um, so the finance committee, um, I mean, they did not recommend, or they rec they did not recommend um, the replacement, but they did say that they wanted a more permanent solution um, than um, the canvas and metal um, 
structure. So if you're proposing a, a more permanent solution, I think that's more applicable. Um, I'm just, I'm not sure on the cost. Um, is 50,000 for, for that small of an area reasonable? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it has to be pretty substantial, you know, uh, construction to withstand, you know, 140 mile per hour uh, wind loads in that vicinity. So uh, we did receive quotes um, and it was within that ballpark. Plus the cost of material is through the roof right now. Um, so that's pretty reasonable given the, the day and age we're living in right now. Okay, um, so to the board, do we want to move on this tonight or not? Mike? Uh, the proposal here by Georgia Zeroning, is that for Canvas? That's in our packet? Yes, that's, that's for Canvas and a metal frame. So yeah, that seems like, you know, and that's, it looks like a total of 30,000 for Canvas and metal frame over 30,000. Yeah, was that a... Um, it's like 7,760 and then another 25. Yeah, that's the canvas. Yeah. Do, do so, you guys have the wood framed estimate? Did, no, uh, we don't, we don't have here? that one. No, okay. But, um, uh, you know, I think another $20,000 to have something that's nicer and is actually more permanent it probably makes sense. But um, yeah, I, I don't have a problem um, approving this. Okay, Helen? I think it's, yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm with the FinCom, I'm against it. And by the way, we've got the pavilion or whatever you wanna call it over at Baker's Field, right next door. Why do we need another thing like this that isn't even as solid? Okay. Thank because you. we have like 30,000 people come to town every year. And they get to be on the beaches. They get to be all over. I just think yet another structure that we you know, don't need and that isn't as solid as that pavilion, which could use more use. It could have more use. The Bakerfield Pavilion, what is it called? It's not a pavilion. It's called something else. But you know what I'm talking about. Thank you. John? I didn't have my hand up. Yeah, I know. Um, I was trying to get a sense of the, of the board if we wanted to move on this tonight or not. Yeah, I uh, it, it, based on the pr proposal I'm looking at with the steel frame, that makes no sense at all to, to you know, put up the same kind of thing that rusted out on us before. Um, do we need it? Uh, I, I tend to agree with Helen on this, that uh, this is one area where we could maybe trim some fat. Okay. Um. So, so without doing this, we just leave, we still have to remove the old stuff, right, Jay? I mean. Yeah, we'd have to remove it. Pretty, it, it they'd yeah. just be without a, a cover. They just use the, uh, the decking with no shade. Okay. Well, well, if we do that, is it actually going to be usable or should we just get rid of it all together? The whole bandstand? Yeah. No, the, the decking is in great condition. Uh, the railing system that needs a few upgrades, but it's very minor. Um, that's, that's a solid structure. And, it, you know, the, I think they used um, mahogany. Mm -hmm. Um, but if it's, it, it, if it's left it's, unprotected, if we take the awning down, will it stay in that condition? It definitely will deteriorate faster, um, but it's not enclosed on all you know four sides, so it still is subject to to weather and rain and, and snow. Um, it it just it won't have the feel that it had before. Um, I know that was donated. I'm not sure who, who the family was that donated that, but um, I, I don't know if there's an obligation of the town to preserve that 
awning in some fashion. I, I don't know. I don't know if, if there's an agreement or anything like that. But Maybe we should find I, that out first. I just think that this is, sorry, Ryan. Yep, go ahead. I just think that this is a, you know, a widely used facility and it has been for years. I mean, the, the square dance is down there. Um, there's bands regular pl have regularly played down there. Um, it's a it's a fairly popular area to congregate and have a venue uh, that the town has spent very little money on over the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years. Um, and it just seems to me like, you know, it improves, it's an improvement to the town. It, it, it is something for the town to have this venue and maintain it. Uh, and losing it, I think, is, you know, just not a great look. It's not like, you know, we're talking about making a new venue. We're talking about maintaining something that already exists and is, is well used throughout the, the town and the community. People spend time there. So uh, I'm in favor of, of doing it. I don't know if this is the best bargain or whatever, um, but it, it does seem a more long-term solution. And um, I, I think you know, will be continued to be uh, used and and um, we're a tourism destination. So part of our allure is that we have things to do. And this is one of those things, the square dance. I mean, I grew up going down there. A lot of people did, so. Okay. Is, there, um, is there a way I could share my screen? I actually have a picture. I don't know if, uh, that I was. Yep, I, you're good, go ahead. Okay. If you guys can see that or not. Not yet. Hold on. Should be down at the bottom. It says share. Yep. Oh, is that the proposed uh, wooden one? Yeah. So that's what was uh, priced out. Um, Angel actually reached out to the company. You know what the company's name is? Yeah, it's um, it's the same company that installed the Stoltzfus. other pavilion. Stoltzfus. Uh, Horizon Structures. Yeah, same company. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Horizon. Okay, uh, John. Yeah. Uh, do they give a, a projected lifespan for this structure? They did not. But if I were to take a guess, I'd say twenty years. And, and how long did the uh, former structure or the current structure last? Ooh, I don't, I'm not sure when that was installed. Does anybody else know that on the board? I don't know, but it's been in rough shape for a while, you know? Yeah. So, but I, I do know that that company is uh, fairly affordable uh, compared to, to most. So it's not like we're looking at... Uh, you know, an inflated uh, proposal. So if it's a solid permanent replacement like this, I would be in favor of it. Um, I'm just wondering if, I mean, the, the price for some of the other items, um, like the recladding of the, the school has increased drastically because of the, the price spike. Um, I'm just wondering if it, if the price for lumber will come down or not. Um, but I'm in favor of replacing the awning with a permanent structure. Um, John. Yeah, I, I, you know, in retrospect, I'd, I'd have to say that if it doesn't make sense to me to leave the stage there unprotected and, and basically not as usable if there's not going to be a structure there. Um, so I would, you know, I would reluctantly go, if we're going to go this route with, the, with a more substantial structure, I, I think I could favor that. Okay. Um, so I move to approve uh, the request for the bandstand awning replacement with a, as presented tonight. Second. Okay, roll call vote. 
Uh, John, I. Okay. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Ellen, nay. I think uh, it could be used just fine without an awning. Thank you. The stand, yes, is good, but the awning, you know, how often does it rain? Okay. Um, water refill stations. Yeah, so that was um, the recycling committee reached out to me uh, to look into a proposal to install some water refill stations around town. And I thought it was a good idea, especially in light of the recent water bottle ban. Um, we're proposing it at four locations, uh, library, town hall, uh, by the basketball courts on Kendrick Ave and at the marina. Um, so it just gives people an opportunity to fill, fill up their water bottles and, um, and it's strongly recommended by the recycling committee. Um, will these work in the event of a power outage? No. No. Okay. So I, if they're outdoors, I, I would like them to actually function in the event of, of, of a power loss. I mean, I would say that, you know, everybody here probably has recently gone through a extended period of time where we were without power and people are trying to figure out where to get water. Um, so I, I would want to see some um, resiliency built into them to, to service that emergency need. Um, Helen? Yeah, um, we have one very good, very usable place at the fire department. They have a generator. Nobody needs to, you know, it's just one thing to drain and pay attention to in below freezing weather. And frankly, I think that that one central location is enough for this small town. I went and filled up some containers for people, um, including myself, and, you know, to flush toilets. And um, I think that the one at the fire station is enough. Everybody knows about it. And some of these might be used um, not very much at all. I mean, it's spread all over town and the recycling committee is right that we need one place to be able to get the water and that's at the fire station, it's public water. So it's, you know, doesn't need to be piped from somewhere else. And what's wrong with that? Um, so that's not what the recycling committee was requesting. So what were they requesting? What did I get wrong? All of it. <laughs> well, wait a minute. What? Where did, is that? Is that in the uh, big it's for drinking water? That it. That's what I got at the um. That's mm -hmm. at the at the fire station. There are. Oh, this is fire. water re refill stations. So I was saying it would be helpful if they worked in the event of a power outage. Or yes, I agree with that. But at the fire station, there's one for flushing, Ugh. and then there's one for drinking. So Helen, in in the town hall. When you go in, there are water refill stations where you can bring a refillable bottle and fill, fill, you fill your water. Has, the COA has one. Yep. This and is what the fire department. Hey, well, okay, John. Here? Yep. Oh, go ahead, John. Uh, I'm, I'm just not sure why we, we need this. I mean, we all have running water in our homes. Can't we refill water bottles before we head out? Um, uh, uh, this is more for the general public. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, for people that are, you know, walking along Kendrick Ave or they're at the basketball courts and they want to refill their water or they're uh, congregating at town hall and walking through the center, you know, the central district. Um, right. it, and it's an effort. I think it's called refill Cape Cod. Um, other communities are doing it and they put, GPS location of where these water refill stations are. Okay. It's all it's populated on the map. Um, so Orleans is doing it, Provincetown, um, East Ham, all those communities. So I think uh, the recycling committee wanted to get up to speed with those communities. Okay, well, the, in that case, uh, do they have to be electrically operated units with digital readouts or can it be a simple tap? Simple right. tap. You know, a simple tap that requires no electricity. Mm -hmm. And that's $20,000. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Mike. So these would not be the same sort of water filling stations like uh, at the COA um, or the town hall? They would be similar to those, yeah. Well, those are electrically operated. These, hold on. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Well, well, while we're waiting for Jay, I'll just say my piece. Uh, I just think this is an incredibly important thing to do when you ban plastic water bottles. Um, people are used to being able to go and buy a bottle of water uh, anywhere around town. That that's over. We don't allow that anymore. Um, with that comes the need for, again, we are not a small town for all of the year. We are highly densely populated for a lot of the year and it's hot out and people need to be able to get small volumes of water and refill their waters if they can't go buy a water bottle. I don't think we want to and expect all our tourists and visitors to be buying Gatorades or soft drinks because they are allowed to do that. Um, we haven't banned plastic. We've only banned plastic water bottles. And the, the whole premise behind banning those plastic water bottles was to give people places to fill up water in their refillable bottles. And barring having that, we're basically just asking people to go thirsty or drink soft drinks, um, you know, or go into restaurants and, and ask for glasses of water. And I just don't think that's practical or, or good public relations really as a town when you say, hey, you can't buy water in this town. And guess what? There's nowhere to fill it up. You know, go find a hose. You know, um, people are driving around. They're not like at their house or whatever. They're doing their thing. So we need places for people to fill up water. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Mike. And uh, I apologize. These are electro electrically um, connected. It's not, it's not pressurized. Um, you say they are or are not electric. They are electric. Okay, this, that, that goes to my point. I'm not opposed to having you know stations around town where people can re refill water bottles. I just don't see why we should spend $20,000 putting in refrigerated, electrically operated, digital readout contraptions. If we're going to do this, let's do it fiscally responsibly. Okay, so... I would say it really makes a lot of sense to have refill stations at particularly uh, Mayo, the basketball courts at Mayo Beach um, and the marina um, because, you know, the people using those, those facilities really do need access to, to water. Um, I, I would like to see them function in the event of a power loss in some way. Um, but um, other than that, I'm fine with it going to the voters of and see what they have to say. So that's just me. Uh, John? Oh, I think I... I okay, Helen? Yeah, two things. One is, I didn't get it all wrong, Ryan. Um, hey, whatever happened to all the people I know, including myself, who bring water for home, we're all... People are living in places, even people who are camping, the campsites have, you know, access to water. People fill up their bottles, they bring them with them. You're smart about it. They don't depend on the town providing them with water. And that happens more often than not. This is doing more than meeting them halfway. I agree with John about it should be as simple as possible if it happens at all. But it's not like people aren't able to take care of themselves. Thank you. Okay, so I think we're we're split right now on it, um, and Janet's not here. Um, so at this point, I would I would like to postpone for the discussion on the refill stations until the thirteenth when we have a full board. Thank you. Okay. Let me just write it down so I don't forget. Um, In the meantime, Mr. Chair, I can do a little research, um, you know, to see if there's units that can uh, still be powered maybe by solar 
or something and hmm. still be functional um, in the event of a power outage. Okay, um, Mike. On another note, is it possible to get the old town pump up and running again so people <laughs> can pump water when there's a power outage? Nah. Okay. I just don't see why we just can't have a simple spigot. So um, maintenance of the outside. No uh, research needed. So maintenance of the bathrooms at the out, or I would say the pump. I don't know. Out, out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Another one of those nights. Uh, maintenance of the the bath the public bathrooms at town hall. I'll just yeah. say. Oh. Yes. So, yeah. um, I'm so I, I move. I'm actually going to make a motion. Um, so I move to approve uh, the capital request for maintenance, um, improvement of the town hall bath, public bathrooms. On second. Okay. Roll call vote. John, I. Um, can we discuss this really quickly? Yeah, you can. Yep. Uh, Jay, I just want to bring this up just generally because I think we're in real need of some actual renovation of the bathrooms in town. Um, and I'm hoping that we can sort of get onto a track where we, you know, renovate one set of bathrooms per year in the town with new fixtures, possibly, you know, paint the walls. I don't know, maybe whatever needs to be done to improve the quality of the experience of using a public restroom in the town of Wellfleet, because I've been to a lot of third world countries and <laughs> a lot of them have better bathrooms in this town, you know? So I, I just think we really need to like actually start taking steps to increase uh, the, the uh, to, to improve our public restrooms. I mean, I think it's a real problem. Yeah, I, I would support that as well. Um, so, so yes, I will vote for this, but I would like to see a a, a, a plan to renovate. Yeah, I mean, we okay. can actually have that as a motion right after we finish this one. So, okay. if that works. Okay. Uh, so, Second. Ryan, I. Oh yeah, Michael, I. John, I. Okay. I Okay, motion carries 4-0. Um, Mike, do you want to make the motion? Uh, yeah, I move that the, to request that the DPW, uh, the head of the DPW uh, come up with a, a capital improvement plan to renovate uh, uh, public restrooms year over year to completely renovate the, well, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, no, not completely, just, just to renovate. Just, yeah. yeah, just renovate each of the bathrooms one year at a time or whatever the plan is. I don't really care. Does that make sense? Uh, John? Uh, just, just can I make a suggestion uh, in connection with that, that some really good research be done into the selection of fixtures? Because uh, one of the things that jumps out at me, for instance, about the marina bathrooms is the uh, lavatory fixtures didn't, they weren't in there for terribly long before they became almost unusable and they still are. And uh, uh, there are there is better equipment out there. <coughs> uh, in connection with the kind of work I do, I have to research stuff all the time to you know find out what's going to hold up and what isn't. So uh, we can make an effort to do that. That would really be make things cost effective. Okay, so a uh, motion was made and seconded. I uh, can I have a roll call vote. John, I. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Okay. Um, the irrigation at the town hall, um, Juan, I. So this dollar amount is below the dollar amount for a capital request. So, uh, um, Helen? We really need this. I am really sick of, you know, seeing the hoses watering the asphalt and so forth. And um, it would really make a difference in the quality of the grass and it would help not having to maintain it in the same way. It would really help in so many ways. Okay, Mike? Uh, I just, I don't want to put irrigation in unless we're going to renovate the lawn and actually, you know, 
the lawn great and put no the, the lawn needs some some renovation too um you know uh, i don't have a problem with irrigating it i'd just like to see the the lawn actually get some some renovation reseeding and and stuff like that alongside with irrigating so that it looks good that's all i know what you guys have to do right now <laughs> with the sprinklers and it's almost impossible to uh to to keep it looking good even with all those sprinklers blown can i make a suggestion sure um i, I mean i hate to raise the dollar amount but if we add you know um your town hall irrigation and lawn replacement or, or something like that um, to this line item. We can handle it like that. I, I personally, I think like, it, I would like to see, and this has been on my radar for a long time, ever since I installed those public benches from the bus stops um, that are just really impractical and uncomfortable and not laid out very well uh they're on those strange slabs i'd just like to see the town hall lawn area and that area that was sort of iconic to me growing up and i think as a part of the town an iconic location have a return to like some some nice wooden benches and and a sort of refurbishment let's not call it a renovation of that of that lawn and maybe that's a little bit more maybe we can start with just you know uh re renovating the lawn but I i'd like to see the benches get replaced with something that that looks a little bit more nice and not so suburban um in the future so if i could make a suggestion um we could refer this back to the dpw um and have them present something along those lines at a later date relatively yeah. soon um, but before we do that, Helen? Yeah, um, replacement of that grass, I would think twice because that grass has been there for a long time and it actually does pretty well. It just needs maintenance that it's not getting in terms of water supply in a way that is less work intensive for your department, Shay. Yeah, word. I mean, we literally go out there with a sprinkler and, and reposition it during the day. Yes, I know, and <laughs> it's inefficient. And we looked into it quite closely when the whole thing about the trees came up. I would just, all the other maintenance you do, you lime it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, yeah. you know, do- we aerate everything. it? You do everything, I noticed that. Mm -hmm. And all I have to say is if you had irrigation, anything else that would happen after that would go better. And the trees would be happier, by the way. Okay, so um, Ryan, are you telling us when you said the thing about, oh, it's not enough money for a capital project, are they supposed to add something to make it okay as a capital project or can we just please do this? Um, for a request for this amount it would typically be under operation budget. Well, can we vote on it tonight without, well, we're so not doing the operation budget tonight. Right. So I, I'd actually like to refer it back um, to address some of Mike's concerns. Okay, okay. Um, the, the concern I have is that if you put irrigation in, then then actually doing any regrading or 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 renovating of the lawn becomes you know an issue. So if we're going to do any um, if we're going to make any changes there, you know, it makes sense to do it all at once. Okay, so I move to refer um, the town hall irrigation proposal back to the DPW um, to include um, a more comprehensive, I don't know, comprehensive, I don't know, plan for the <coughs> town hall lawn to include the replacement of the benches as well. <laughs> Second. Jay? Uh, just wanted to clarify. Does that, do you mean like look into, um, you know, different types of vegetation in addition to the lawn? Because I know that from, it's my understanding that already tried to get passed 
Yeah, I would say keep it simple. Okay. <laughs> That's one. Just wanted to clarify. <laughs> and don't touch the trees. <laughs> Point taken. No, I just meant, you know, minor grading around where the benches are because there's some issues down there and, sure. uh, you know, probably some leveling and I don't know, some determination of whether you need to just, maybe you just need to overseed um, and whatever, but I don't know what the soil condition is underneath there. If you're just watering sand or if there's mm -hmm. any kind of loam underneath or whatever, but that, that's okay. a good thing. Yeah. Okay, so the motion was made. I don't believe it's been seconded. Call on second. Okay, roll call vote. John I. Michael I. Ryan I. Helen I. Okay, motion carries 4 0. Uh, replacement of the 2008 front end loader. Okay, so that, um, that has always been on the FY23 request. Um, and it definitely is in need of replacement. It's starting to rust out. Um, we use it heavily at the transfer station for all types of functions there. Um, we reviewed other, actually FY23 had a, a lot of rolling stock items that I went through with um, our head mechanic, Lloyd Pickard. Um, and we, uh, you know, we decided which ones we could still defer. Um, and this was one that we just couldn't defer anymore, especially given the time frame of getting a new one, which would be probably a year from April. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, uh, so I move to approve uh, the request for a replacement of the 2008 front end loader at the transfer station. Second, John second. Okay, roll call vote. John I. Michael I. Ryan I. Helen I. Um, so the 2012 one ton dump truck with sander and plow, I assume that you went through the same process that you just described. Same thing, yep. Okay, um, so are there any questions on the board on this item? No. Okay, uh, so I move to approve uh, the request to replace the 2012 one ton dump truck uh, with sander and plow. Second. Second. Okay, roll call vote. John I. Michael I. Ryan I. Helen I. Okay, um, Mass Dot Route 6 Main Street Intersection Project. Um, is this, yeah. So this will be for services the, uh, from Stantec. Um, I reached out to Jill McLaughlin um, just to get an understanding of what she would anticipate for FY23 for their services. And um, she sent me, I believe it was around 25,000. I added a little uh, percentage contingency there just to give us a little cushion and uh that's where that figure comes from okay are there questions from the board yes okay um last year we, or in uh in june i believe it was we approved one hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars for the uh study uh where does this fit into that picture and why are we being asked to approve more the, that, the, the appropriation at town meeting was just for FY22 and their services um, to get us to uh, pass the 75% design stage. So FY23 will be nearing the finish line, um, hopefully. And, um, you know, we'll be more towards 100% design at that point. So the amount of their services won't be as much. Okay, uh, Helen. Yeah. Um. Well, John asked my the first part of my question, but the second part was, so I'm feeling stupid here, Jay. Does this include the culvert and the Hawes pond? You know, culvert uh, also, or is that a separate? I think that's a separate request, isn't it? I think that's the next one, isn't it? That. Um. Well, that. 
that's actually going to be discussed at the next the meeting next week. Um, but but basically, the state is offering to pay for design um, and installation of a new culvert if the town's willing to accept a change of the state highway layout. Um, so we would take the state layout outside of that culvert, so future ownership would be on the town, including maintenance. Of the culvert. Of the culvert. Yeah. So this Route 6 and Main Street engineering is, you know, the thing that includes the, you know, um, much discussed sidewalks, uh, which I was uh, labeled as being crazy because I didn't like the idea of them. <laughs> and um, I'm not, frankly, that crazy. Um, and so that includes, that line item includes those sidewalks. Is that correct? Yes. That, Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, so before I get to you, Mike, um, so I would say in the future, I, I prefer to see these projects more fully funded um, so that where you don't have to debate it a uh, number of times at town meeting um, and, and in our meetings as well. Um, so uh, Mike. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that uh, I, I just didn't quite understand actually, um, Jay, uh, the meeting that you're going to have. I mean, as far as this goes, I think $30,000 for, you know, a, a multi-million dollar project is money well spent. Um, but the uh, engineering where the state's willing to do the design work, they were already going to install it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Regardless. So do the design work in exchange for us taking the uh, ownership of that part of the layout. Um, to me, uh, that doesn't make that much sense. I don't know how much it costs for the design work, but I would think probably in the tens of thousands for the culvert, maybe 50, 60,000 uh, and a lifetime of maintenance of that area. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't really know. The, well, um, I just got a quote for the culvert on uh, Briar Lane to be engineered and it was upwards of $70,000. Okay. Just, just for the engineering. Right. So for the full replacement, I'm sure it's, you know, I don't know, $200,000. So, it, you know, it's, I think it's a, it's a good trade, especially since the state has no stake in that um, culver whatsoever. Right. So, yeah, it, and they want you to laterally go in and weld it again. No. <laughs> how uh how far out is it where they, they want to to take the lay take part of the layout and transfer it to the town um i would say that we're that's yeah. on ne next week's agenda and okay. we'll, yeah there, there's an exhibit yeah, that will be on the uh you're right the packet okay sorry about that i got off topic okay so i move to approve um the mass dot route six main street intersection project capital request second okay roll call vote john i michael i ryan i ellen a okay motion carries three one uh keller's corner um so um again this this is a, a study for and the Finance committee again. This is another one that they recommend it being uh, not in the capital budget, but as a separate article. Um, but um, I guess, are there any questions about the project itself at this point? Because a lot of us have already heard about it. So. Okay, uh, so I, I move to uh, approve and recommend an article into the annual town meeting warrant in the amount of $50,000 for um, engineering study um, for Keller's Corner um, and ro uh, for road protection and stabilization and shorefront stabilization. Second. Okay, roll call vote. John, I. Michael I. Ryan I. Ellen I. 
Okay, motion carries four one or four zero. Um, so where are we? Um, emergency project preparedness. Yeah, Mr. Chair, do you want me to give a little brief explanation about this one? Yeah. This is something new that um, I brought up this year. And may, this per, might not be the the best avenue to, to put this on the capital plan. Maybe it should be an operating, I, I don't know. But it's basically to have a fund available for emergency projects that come up that won't eat away at our operating budget. Um, there's a number of things that came up last year that we had to um, eat up our budget for, um, you know, pumps that failed at town hall, um, uh, a truck, uh, our, our 10 wheeler had to, the frame needed to be replaced. That was $30,000 that we weren't expecting. So, so things of that nature, I'd like to have, um, you know, some type of, avenue to to fund those okay uh so to me if it's like a continual request it, it probably should be operating budget um but helen yeah um i was going to say that um because now ryan i get it um but in other words this would be an internal decision the dpw and it definitely sounds like you need to be able to do these things no further um, authority would approve your using this fund. It would be a decision made in an emergency of that sort that you just described only by the DPW. You wouldn't have to run it by the TA or how does that work? Yeah, we would just have a line item we'd, we'd use to charge that account. And, and Charlie, I don't know if you, you could correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, I don't know if there's any type of uh, accounting principles that we would need to abide by. Yeah, that, that's sort of what I was trying to pin down. Thank yeah, the you. only thing uh, that would be, you know, I think the DPW superintendent should have the authority, uh, but if there's a procurement issue, a contract issue, then Rebecca and or the new town administrator would be involved. Okay, um, Mike? Uh, yeah, I was just going to agree with you. It should be in the uh, operating budget, and then that way, if it doesn't get used, it could, you know, roll over or whatever. But um, yeah, I think it should okay. be operating. Okay, so I'm I move to remove the emergency project preparedness from the FY 2023 capital improvement uh, plan um, to be um, included in the operating budget. Owen second. Okay, roll call vote. John I. Michael I. Ryan I. Helen I. Okay, motion carries four zero. Um, I got a question for you, Ryan. Yep, shoot. Uh, what rule on changing one's vote on something that's already been decided? Is that allowed or not? Uh, you can ask for the question be reconsidered. Um, and, and then um, it would be voted on by the board to, if we want to reconsider the question or not. Yeah, wait till the end of the meeting to do that. Um, I don't want to waste time. Yeah, I, I would. We're getting pretty close to the end of of the capital improvement plan. So let's, yeah. Okay. Um, just remember, remember, remind yourself. Okay. Um, so Charlie. Um, I don't see Mary Beth Rodman on, uh, Martha Gordon's on uh, from the school committee. Um, so we have the cladding replacement of the, the elementary school. I, I believe Mary Beth Rodman did kind of indicate why it was needed. Um, uh, can you unmute uh, Martha Gordon, uh, Rebecca? Hi, Martha. Hi, okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, yes, um, we had, uh, Mary Beth actually addressed this a little bit earlier, but I can go on. And I think maybe I should just wait 
to see if you all have any questions about it. Um, Charlie, is this for the um, is this for the updated amount for the cladding? Yeah, the the eight hundred is the updated amount. Yes, it's eight eight hundred. Okay, because in our packet it's six hundred. Yeah, in the spreadsheet, I I got the right amount, but I didn't include um, I didn't include the right backup sheet in the detail. Okay, I, I'll I'll get everybody that, but I, it is I, a, 800. I, I don't need it. Okay, <laughs> I mean, okay. That's pretty simple. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any questions about this? Um, my only question, I guess, is, is with a project this scale, if it's necessary to do it this year with the price of, of cedar shingles and the, the supply problems that we're having, or... It you know, I, I don't really know because- he, and, and Mike, I'm sorry to interrupt. The, the 800 is in 2024. Two, 2024? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It okay. was uh, supposed to be this year, but because the fire suppression system never made it to the warrant last year, mm -hmm. we had to push everything back by one year. So okay. in here where it says, Cedar shingle cladding and trim work, mm -hmm. FY 2023. Is that not right? That's not right. Okay. It should... I think I in my spreadsheet, I have it in 2024 though, don't I? Yes. Maybe, I don't think I see the spreadsheet. Yeah, it's a yeah. beginning. It's the very beginning of it. Um, all right, so I guess that, would also make it so the you know hopefully the price for shingles comes down in the year. Um, I I don't know if we can reasonably hope for that though. <laughs> I don't know. I it can't get much higher. I don't think, but maybe who knows. Okay. I like your optimism. <laughs> I can't even speak anymore. I like your optimism, well, Mr. Curley. <laughs> yeah. Um, so on that, I guess we'll just take no action on it tonight um, because we don't need to. Um, and it will come up again next year for approval. Yeah. Um, so uh, replacement of exterior lobby doors, uh, recreation department doors, and Montessori preschool doors. Um, does anybody have any questions for this? And if I, if I could, yep. Brian, I'm sorry to interrupt. In the, uh, the corrected plan that I didn't include, they've moved the doors, the 800, the 25, and the 10 to 2024. The only thing that'll be on 23 will be the uh, sprinkler system. Okay. okay. All right. So then let's just handle the sprinkler system. Um, and that's now 2.2. Uh, I believe the school committee is going to change that number to two million two hundred thousand. Okay. Um, you know, I, I would just say that this is an example where somebody tried to cut costs somewhere, and we're definitely paying for it now. Um, well, in the past, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe before you were born. No, uh, it was. I was in. I was in the school when it was being rebuilt. So, um, so I, I moved to approve uh, the fire suppression system, um, as presented tonight. Call in second. Okay, roll call vote. John, I. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Um, and then before we uh, finish with the school. Um, in the following fiscal years, they have a ten thousand uh, dollar request for each each subsequent year um, to replace computers and tech. Um, if, if it's like that, I'd almost rather have that be in a operating budget than a capital request at that point. So, um, but that's it on the, the school, I believe. Thank you, duly noted. Um, 
sorry, I'm just trying to, okay. Um, it's earlier, I don't know, it, it got lost somewhere in here, um, but we do have the basketball courts, um, which is, A ten ten thousand dollar request is that correct, Charlie? I think it's fourteen thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. Um, and they provided a the justification in that there's cracking and it's getting worse essentially. Um, yeah, they gave all the backup from a contractor. Yeah. Um, so, are there any questions or comments on it to this point? Um, so I move to approve uh, the capital improvement request for, to repair and resurface the basketball courts at Mayo Beach. One second. Okay, uh, roll call vote. John I. Michael I. Ryan I. Colin I. Okay, so um, John, this would be um, when you connect, I would say this would be the best time to ask for yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to call the question again on the uh, thirty thousand dollars for Stantec. Okay. Um, do you want to reconsider the question tonight or not? Is that a motion, John? Oh uh, yeah, I'd like to make a motion to just uh, call the vote again on the uh, 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 capital improvement uh, appropriation for Stantec. Helen, second. Okay, uh, roll call vote. John, nay. You're... No, you're, we're just voting to reconsider. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Uh, John, I. Michael, no. Ryan? I would like to vote no, but how about my suggestion will actually be um, to reconsider it on the 13th and not tonight when we have a full board. I'm fine, I'm fine with that. Okay, if, if that's the motion, then then Ryan, I- you want to remake the motion or? Uh, yeah, I would just say to um, to reconsider the, the question on um, the Route 6 Main Street um, intersection project um, to be reconsidered on this December, 13th. Is it the 13th or the 14th? It's the 14th. December 14th. Helen second. Okay. Jay has his hand up. Yep, Jay. Sorry, you're muted. Uh, Here we go. Jay. All right, thanks, Rebecca. I just wanted to clarify that that funding source is not strictly for Main Street. It is also for Route 6. Yep. I understand. Just wanted to clarify. So you'll have two on December 14th, uh, the refill stations and the Route 6 Main Street project. Or actually, did we finish voting on that? No, we didn't. OK. We, we didn't vote on the reconsideration. Okay. You moved, I seconded, now we get to vote. Okay, roll call vote. John, I. Michael, no. Ryan, I. Helen, I. Okay, motion carries 3-1. Um, so, okay, uh, Charlie. Um, Those are my report. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's past. It just went past my bedtime. Anyway, okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, so I'll just go through this kind of quickly. And if you have any questions, maybe you could hold them to the end. Um, I'd mentioned this before, but for the public, um, we are holding a public workshop on the low lying road project uh, tomorrow, December 8th at 4 p.m. And uh, the purpose of that meeting is to get a public input to decide which roads will be evaluated for improvements, educate the public about coastal flooding and demonstrate new tools that show risk to our community. Um, so anyway, that's tomorrow. Um, now, Hillary uh, Lemos, our health conservation director is working with town council to draft, uh, 
to put together some draft legal agreements for citizens who might be interested in installing enhanced IA systems. So we're spending some money working with town council on that project. And of course, uh, I'm very happy to tell you that our new building commissioner, Jim Badera, did start work uh, last week on December 1st. And Vic Staley um, will stay on as an alternate for a while uh, to assist and just continuing to catch up on the backlog and provide some support for Jim. Um, the, we executed a contract for a water rate study uh, with Doug Gardner from Pioneer Consultants. And I have frankly worked with Doug in the past and he does good work. I've used him for many years in Brewster, so that's good. Um, we did execute the um, contract for the town administrative search process and Rick White has already done preliminary interviews with department heads and some citizens in the community. He's gonna be writing up a report and uh, next um, he's gonna be uh, interviewing and talking to members, of the, all the members of the select, the select board. And that'll lead towards um, ultimately a, a community profile that we'll use for recruitment pur purposes. Um, Rebecca roughly issued a notice to proceed uh, for the um, Coles Neck water main replacement project. And I think there's a kickoff meeting next week um, that she'll, she's organizing. So that uh, we'll, we'll start to see some activity on that important project. Uh, the Department of Public Works in Wellfleet just received a recycling dividends grant in the amount of $10,800. Um, and they'll be using that to, um, you know, maximize reuse, recycling, and waste reduction. So that was nice. You already know that um, Mariam has retired, uh, resigned, and we're out recruiting right now. Um, the um, Judy Sprague, who I've talked about before, who's helping us out um, uh, in an interim basis as well. Judy and I have already been doing departmental budget reviews last week and this week and next week. And um, our goal will be to uh, present the select board in the finance committee with a town budget and a draft town warrant right after the new years. And so we can start in earnest on um, select board and finance committee reviews. So anyway, that's uh, going fairly well. Um, we're kind of squeezing it in amongst a lot of other projects, but we've really, by the way, had a lot of cooperation by the department heads who have really been working so closely with us. We're very grateful. Um, the town audit was scheduled for December 13th, and we pushed that off to the middle of January because, um, you know, Mary and Lisa have had to um, reallocate, you know, what their activities to more day-to-day -day functions. Um, we did have a telephone conference call with the uh, auditors and agreed that pushing it off till the middle of January was just a necessity. And I have submitted, uh, the finance committee is gonna be meeting next week on the 15th. And I have submitted two more reserve rent transfers uh, to pay for costs relative to the shortfall that we have for property and liability insurance and um, the TA search consulting process. And then uh, just a couple of things that came up today uh, that I think are, are kind of nice. Um, Aramisco is the firm that we're working with to install the solar at the um, landfill site in Wellfleet. And we did successfully pass um, what is called the witness test with Eversource that occur actually occurred last week. And that's an important test and it'll, um, it, it'll lead um, next to this permission to operate uh, permit. And so they think that the system might be turned on relatively soon, certainly by um, the new year. So that's nice. And then um, the board last week had asked me to reach out to Ann Sterling, the, I believe, president of the Fields Point Property Association. I have done that, I spoke to her today. I just wanted to let her know that, you know, we are, you know, interested and wanna work with them. 
And uh, so I just touch bases and introduce myself. And my goal will be to um, wait till Nancy gets back and Nancy Savetta, and then I'll, um, Anne and Nancy and I will get together. We'll get some advice from council. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to let you know that I've touched bases with her. So I think uh, that's all I have. Okay. Are there any questions for Charlie? We're all tired. <laughs> okay. Uh, topics for future agendas. Um, John, you said that you had one. Yes. Uh, I would like to, uh, in lieu of what I've been hearing about uh, Cape Cod mosquito control having difficulties uh, getting uh, permission from the seashore to uh, resume uh, larvicide operations in the Herring River Basin. Uh, I would like to bring uh, uh, Gabrielle Sarkolsky and either Brian Carlstrom, uh, Lauren uh, McKean, or both of them uh, all together to a, a, a future select board meeting to uh, work this out because uh, uh, we, we all know, I don't have to go over what we experienced this past uh, season with the mosquitoes. There's no reason that that kind of thing should happen. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that we really need to be partners with the seashore, that they're partners with us, they're not overlords. And they have to work with us on stuff like this. It's important to get us all together and get on the same page. Okay, so I'll work on, um, yeah, getting that. Uh, Helen? Yeah, an agenda item for that would be useful. Um, I heard, uh, I feel they are working, but we need to, you know, share that with the rest of the public. Um, I want to know what the story with the fuel pumps is. They were supposed to have been installed quite a while ago. They're now way over, way beyond. And the last time we heard about them, it was gonna happen this year and it hasn't happened. And what's the story? That's the first thing. The second thing, Ryan, is where is the correspondence agenda item? Because I had something to bring up. Um, this is in our regularly scheduled meeting uh, on okay. Tuesday. Fine. Okay. Sorry. I just thought it was an oversight. You're right. I've lost track of what's a regularly scheduled meeting at this point. Um, but the fuel pumps, why aren't I? Ah, thank you. Oh. Uh, Charlie? Um, yeah, th thank you, Helen. I, I probably um, should have wrote that in my report. Um, I know that Rebecca uh, Roughly um, and Will Sullivan are concerned about that. It has been delayed. And they did last week actually reach out to our engineering firm to ask uh, that we get a schedule of when they're going to finish the uh, specification so we can go out to bid. So I'll talk to Rebecca and try to give, and I'll give you an update at our next meeting, but Rebecca's sort of all over that in well. Okay, uh, John? Yeah, just connection with the agenda item I brought up. Uh, I wanna make sure we include the issue of uh, pathways into the areas they wanna treat so that they can get a good jump start on this. They could be doing, they could be working on that over the winter. Okay, all right. Um, Minutes, I, I guess. Okay, um, I, I have one amendment as well. Um, it's on the, the first one, which is the November 17th meeting. Um, second to last um, bullet point, I guess, uh, where it says board, the board moves on a letter written by Chair Curley regarding the mask mandate and discussion each paragraph. I would just say, uh, and the board moved on the mask mandate drafted by Chair Curley and discussed each paragraph and language that needed to be changed um, rather than the letter. That's that's it. For me. The what instead of the letter? Uh, it, so, and okay. the board moved on the mask mandate uh, drafted by Chair Curley and discussed each paragraph oh. and the language that need you know, and the language. Um, it wasn't a letter. Yep. 
Got it. Thank you. Okay, uh, John. Uh, yeah, th uh, this may not matter. I'm not sure, but uh, the the minutes for that meeting certainly seem to be somewhat sanitized in, in light of how the meeting actually went. Is that does that matter? I mean, should the meeting the minutes have captured some of the nuances? Uh, the news. May I address that? Yeah, sure, Helen. In my opinion, John. The person who takes the minutes has, you know, kind of a sacred role and they get to give us whatever they want. And we together at one of our open meetings, if it's an open session set of minutes, can amend them any way we want, right? But the happened. way in which they're written by the person who takes the minutes, given that they have to include certain things is really up to that person. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to just offer an amendment. Okay. Uh, that I, I was present at the meeting, but uh, I was unable to communicate due to um, uh, connectivity. Okay. I just like that noted in the minutes somewhere. But when? Um, like somewhere around uh, um Ryan just right where the board where the board moved on the letter whatever Ryan amended that just say Michael Devasto was unable to comment at the at the meeting due to connectivity okay um, so just that, right? Not in another point. Well, it was the whole meeting actually, but I could hear you guys, so whatever. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's noted in there. I don't care where. Okay. Um are there any other amendments to November 17th? Okay, so I move to approve the minutes of the November 17th Slight Board meeting with the Board of Health um, as amended. Second. Okay, roll call vote. John, I. Michael, I. Ryan, I. Helen, abstain. Okay, and Helen, you had an amendment for one of these yeah. minutes? It's, um, when I actually said something about this before. Um, so it's on the uh, November 23rd meeting, and it's on page seven. And it's also earlier. And I commented on this before. Um, at a certain point, I left the meeting. And at the point, and I, I noted when it was at the time. Um, and right there after that agenda item, it should say there should be a line, Wilson left the meeting. And to give the time, which was 8.45. And having it at the end does not signify that. Therefore, you go through the rest of the meeting without any vote coming from me. And that's the reason it needs to be put right after that section. And that is in the recording, I think, of the last meeting. You know, I pinned it down when it was I left. So Good. if you could Good. please amend that, Rebecca, to include that information. For the 23rd? Helen, you voted on the minutes on the 23rd and amended them at the end of the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, but I amended them. So what am I looking at these minutes for? I'm looking at Tuesday, November 23rd. We were given these minutes in this packet. Right, but it, listening to the meeting, you amended the minutes. So if you couldn't have left the meeting if you amended the minutes. Yeah, I don't think you left the meeting for that, for the 20th. It wasn't that meeting that you left. It was November oh. 9th. Okay, sorry. Oh, I see. That's the amendment. Forgive me. Sorry to take the time. No worries. It's late. Okay. Uh, so I move to approve the minutes of November 23rd and November 30th. Yeah, oh. November 30th, 2021, as drafted. Second. Okay, roll call vote. John, I. 
uh, well, Ryan I, and I. Sorry, Mike. That's fine. Hi. Helen? Abstain. Okay. Motion carries 3 0 with one abstention. Um, I believe we can adjourn. So I move to adjourn. Helen, second. No, me. I'm going to second it. Yeah. Good night, all. Roll call vote. <laughs> Michael. Uh, aye. Aye. <laughs> Yeah, that was a pig pile. Helen and I. Good night. Good night, I love all. You all. Good Goodbye.